Testing the audio. Testing the audio. Testing the audio. We will be beginning our telethon live stream shortly. Test, test, test. Just waiting for confirmation that my voice is coming through. Testing, testing. Oh, cool. Thanks. Oh, I, that makes sense. <laughs> We're testing our audio. Facebook confirmed, great. Testing the audio, testing the audio. Making sure everyone can hear. Testy, testy, testing Testerson. Testing the YouTube audio. Great. Testing on YouTube, YouTube testing. Test, 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 YouTube test. Test, test. Oh, that's fun. The uh, Facebook closed captioning is working. That's great. Or it's kind of working. YouTube confirm, all right. Thank you all you cool cats and kittens who are listening to our live stream. Um, we will begin in about 45 minutes, so stay tuned. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.
Fractured Atlas is comprised of people from all walks of life. It is a fully distributed team living and working in 11 states and six countries. We are artists, entrepreneurs, activists, and administrators who understand what it means and how it feels to win your first grant or present a major work of art. We also know how tough it can be to fundraise and manage the business side of your creative projects. So when you reach out to us and decide to become a member of Fractured Atlas, know that we get it and that we're here to give you the tools that you'll need to help you take your work to the next level. Welcome, everyone, to our first ever Ignite the Arts live stream with Fractured Atlas. We are so happy to have you all with us. Um, and before we get started for the evening, we're going to talk a little bit about, about what Fractured Atlas is. With Fractured Atlas, we help individual artists and arts organizations at every level of the cultural ecosystem in every creative medium through fiscal sponsorship. Now, Fractured Atlas also provides educational resources and personalized support. That means artists can devote their efforts to doing what they do best, making the art that matters to them and to the world. Now, we're based in New York, but our influence is national, even global, with some international members, including Canada. Our vision is to create a world where all artists have the tools they need to make their creative dreams a reality. And I'm joined tonight by our fellow program associate, Lauren Lattimore and our program operations coordinator, uh, Colleen Hughes, who will be hosting the evening for you tonight. So over to Lauren. Thanks, Aisha. I'm gonna just get into what the event is about. Uh, again, welcome to our first ever live stream uh, telethon from Fractured Atlas. Uh, the Fractured Atlas community has been hard hit by COVID-19. Events have been canceled, venues closed, rehearsals made virtual, and this community has joined the reins of people who do not have an income right now. Uh, the Ignite the Arts live stream is an opportunity for Fractured Atlas fiscally sponsored projects to fundraise for and showcase their art. In addition, Fractured Atlas continues to uphold the values of our anti-racism and anti-oppression statement and stands in full support of the Black Lives Matter movement. We'd like to take the opportunity tonight to highlight some of our diverse projects to align uh, that align with this work, as well as share our other organizations or other organizations that are fighting to propel this movement. Now, this is how it's gonna work tonight. We've enlisted 23 fiscally sponsored artists and arts organizations to join us for five minutes each. During uh, these five minute segments, they'll share their art with the community. Projects, please remember that we'll be introducing you, asking a question, and then automatically showing your great footage or showing your great footage first and then giving you the time to share a detail based off of what you chose prior to. We invite everyone who is watching to cheer on one, two, or 23 favorite artists. And if you're able to, please contribute to ensure their work survives this unpredictable time. Great. So we're going to jump right into it. Uh, first up this evening, we'll be hearing from Follow Lead Love with Brian Rubiano, Vocal Voyages with Courtney Lynn Wilds, Intertwining Arts with Alina Oxerlude and Anna Pridakko, and 40 Years of Virtu Virtues with Robbie Kamalo and Lissity Collins. So first up, we'll be going with Brian Rubiano with Follow Lead Love. Hi, Hello. how are you? I'm doing well. How about you? Great. Yes, yeah, wonderful. So just to introduce you, Brian Rubiano is an independent film producer who will be making his film producing debut to a documentary entitled Follow Lead Love with the award-winning and Emmy-nominated Brian Thomas as a director. The production company producing Follow Lead Love is the small business slash independent multimedia production company he co-founded called Transcendians. Did I say that right? Transcendence. Transcendence. Yes. He is also the company's director of business development, creative and collaborative strategies. Brian is also the post-production producer for both the feature documentary film, Amy's Victory Dance, and the short film, Dark Matter Under Spin Kick Pictures with Brian Thomas, also as director. 
Both films have won multiple awards and are currently official selections to various film festivals worldwide. First of all, congratulations on all the successes. Uh, we're so happy to have Thank you. you. Uh, Thank you one, so much. Of course. Uh, one of our questions for you uh, is who or what inspires you and inspires your work? Uh, what inspires me are actually like those day-to-day -day regular folks. It can be that fruit vendor on the street or in the corner because there's something beautiful and inspiring about the nuances of their stories. It can be that, or it can be that, um, person, um, an immigrant who's actually trying to realize the whole, the fabric, be part of the fabric of the American dream. There's that, their story for me is so strong and powerful and it represents this country that we are in right now. Definitely. That's so meaningful and it's so great to see someone who's inspired by just those around you. That's really great, really great to hear. Yes. All right, so let's uh, take a look at the work. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Rubiano, and I am the producer of the documentary film Follow, Lead, Love. This is a film about a queer person of color and an aging Asian female Broadway veteran who joined forces to once and for all help break the barriers of the ballroom world's male as lead and female to follow. But the question is, can they usher it to the next level of true gender equality? Follow Me Love is a film that transcends beyond the world of dance, a documentary that tackles the nuances of socially and culturally relevant issues of our time, such as inclusiveness, acceptance, diversity, female empowerment, and equality. The role of the ballroom competition only serves as the backdrop to reflect a much bigger and more significant message to our overall socio-cultural climate. Our mission is for this film to become one of the catalysts to help start a civilized conversation not only to the dance and arts communities, but to a broader and wider audience, such as the LGBTQI+, Asian and African American communities, and the female demographics. This project is currently in production stage and is being directed by the award-winning and Emmy nominee, Brian Thomas. I am a first-generation immigrant from the Philippines. As a person of color, in so many ways, I see myself being represented by this project. Now, more than ever, I am certain that in my own little way, producing this is my contribution to humanity by being one of the vessels to the voiceless, marginalized, and underrepresented. This work is important, especially in challenging times. While we are poised to do great work, we can't do it without help from generous individuals like you. We are making this film to provide the much needed representation, diversity, and inclusion, for they truly matter now more than ever. Thank you so much, Fractured Atlas, for creating this amazing event. And thank you everyone for your time and helping us complete this film project. And now I present to you the sizzle initial trailer of Follow, Lead, Love. <laughs> This is what I was meant to do, be a professional dancer. As a woman, once you hit 40, you are not viable anymore. I was not finding those opportunities in the world I had known for so long. My homosexuality was still an issue. My race was still an issue. And I was just like, wow, well then where can we be free? Let's go on. I feel, take it, it's been a dream of ours to compete in the ballroom circuit. We understand that men lead and women follow. So for us, our goal is to break that barrier. In 2020, our aspiration is that our 
message of, of connecting and being authentic and being unafraid, that that will inspire more people. It shouldn't be the male is a leader and the female is the follower. It's lead follow. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. He was dancing in heels. Sorry, I was like a dude in heels. And she's like, no, 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 no. He's not only leading in heels, he's leading and following. We're trying to be our highest self by giving our truth. Wow. Thank you, Brian, for sharing that. Thank you so much. That was great. Everyone definitely come out and support um, Brian Rubiano. Uh, right now we are actually gonna go into our next project. Thank you, Brian. Our next uh, project that we're gonna go into is Courtney Lynn Wilds. See if hey there. Hi, Courtney. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good, good. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic today. Absolutely great. Good to see oh. you. Yes. Likewise, um, you're part of Vocal Voyages. Yes. I'm, I'm going to give a little uh, spiel for you. Uh, Courtney Lynn Wilds, for all who don't know, is a professional singer, director, writer, and producer. She is the general manager of the Classical Voice Company, LLC a musical production company located in New Jersey. Yeah. So Courtney, I just want to ask you, um, sure. have you been working on new art over the past few months? And if so, what? Actually, I have. Um, uh, in Manhattan, which is uh, very close to uh, where I live, uh, during the summer, they usually have musicians who will play during uh, lunchtime for uh, people who are working. And so uh, what we developed was a lunchtime summer series called Wild Diva Summer Fest, where uh, <laughs> you sign up and you can receive a link to a 10 minute uh, a musical video uh, singing. And the thought was, you know, just because everyone's home and they can't be out, they should still be able to have a little music at lunchtime. So the links yeah. actually go out at lunchtime. And uh, we do it every Friday. We started July 3rd, and this week is going to be our th fourth week. And we are getting absolutely fabulous responses from it. That is amazing. Okay, well, I'm in the New York area, so if I can, yeah, yeah. I will try to check it out. Well, I'm going to get into um, your great reel that you have for us, so everyone stay tuned. Oh, no, let's do the real second. Let's do the real second. Yeah, let me talk a little bit about the project, and then we'll jump into the reel. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Lauren. Again, I'm Courtney Wilde, and I am a professional opera singer, opera director, uh, actor, and writer. And so I'm going to talk to you about our show, Vocal Voyages. Vocal Voyages is a one-woman vocal show. And what I mean by that is that uh, one person sings all of the main characters of the show, and that one person happens to be myself. Uh, this show is fully staged and orchestrated. And we use music to help to express the thoughts and ideas of all of the characters, all the main characters in the show. The show is actually broken into five vignettes, and you get to meet five different female characters. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about each one right now. Uh, there's Diana. She's a love craze Parisian. There's Helga. She is committed to God and soon to take her vows to be a nun. There's Gina. She's the wife of a big donor uh, to a theater company and a self-proclaimed Oscar level actor. There's Gina, uh, excuse me, Adele. She's a Broadway star and doting mother. And then there's Nellie, who is a fabulous cook and uh, works for a supper club and has a little musical secret. So um, that's our, our show. We use five different types of music in this show, uh, opera and art song, uh, spirituals, 
Broadway, jazz, and blues. And then we also have four different languages, Italian, French, German, and English. But the bulk of the show is in English. Um, we were just getting ready to start pre-production when all the COVID stuff hit. Um, we were supposed to launch this summer. So we're really hoping we'll be able to get back on track to get things up for next summer. Um, and uh, we're just very excited. Uh, we're definitely looking for donations. We have a lot of wonderful professional people to hire, uh, musicians and uh, as well as actors and our crew and everything. So we're really hoping that uh, you will um, donate to our show. But I couldn't let uh, us go without you seeing a little snippet of what you will see. So what we have coming up is a video where you will get to hear some of the music as sung by some of the characters in the show. So if we could roll the reel, that would be great. Here's a small taste of the music from Vocal Voyages. Donate to Vocal Voyages. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Courtney. That was thank beautiful. You. Thank you. Take care. You too. Take care. All right. Yes, remember to keep donating to all of our lovely um, projects. Next up, we have Alina Oxerlud uh, with their co presenter, Anna Pradako. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, welcome. So just to give you a little introduction, uh, Alina Oxlude is a pianist, photographer, founder, and artistic director of Intertwining Arts. Anna Pradako is a visual artist and she creates a painting performance in simultaneous collaboration with Alina, who plays the piano in Transience, painting after scar Scarabian and wine. Uh, did I say that it's Caribbean? Caribbean, yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, great. So just a little question for you both. Um, have you been working on any new art over the past few months? And if so, what? I believe we have. <laughs> um, I'm preparing a new project right now with the Intertwining Arts team that will be shall be premiered. We are hoping that everything will be fine. And it will be premiered in a month from right now on August 20th that will incorporate music, contemporary dance, and 3D projections at the least. Wow, that sounds so amazing and visually stunning. I'm excited to hopefully take a look. Well, tell us a little bit uh, about the work. Uh, actually, it's it's different work, so I would love to concentrate on the project we're presenting today because we're very limited in time, and and we would love to talk about this current project project that we will be releasing very soon. Of course, of course. Um, so 
Uh, thank you so, so very much, uh, Fractured Atlas, first of all, for organizing uh, this live stream. We are, we are super excited to be here tonight. Um, I will talk uh, a little about the project we are presenting that is called Transients Painting After Scrubbing and Vine. Uh, we are working as collaborating artists simultaneously while I'm playing the 24 Preludes by Alexander Scrabbing and the Third Sonata by Carl Vine, the contemporary Australian composer. Anne is creating a painting and we have filmed the entire process. So uh, the film will be released on August 2nd. It's going to be a YouTube premiere available for everyone in the world to watch and it will be at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, well, the project includes many different pieces because we have a set of 24 different preludes. Each of them bears a different emotion, a different mood, and it is incorporated not only through sound, but also through color shades. Uh, the Sonata by Carl Levine is a larger through composed work, so the painting opens up uh, as, a, as a complete work during the sonata and gets united um, more uh, as opposed to the sudden emotions of, of the scrabbing preludes. Um, I will let Anna describe her vision because I think it's very exciting to have a visual artist, a painter to work as a performing artist. So yeah, Anna, what's you. your experience? Uh, well, uh, the artistic approach to the expression of the colors of Scrabbing's music was not really different from the creation of any other painting. Well, I started with a simple color reflection separately for each prelude, labeling every piece for myself in simple categories of tonality and warmth. Well, I can't say that my reflections completely coincided with Scrabbing's well-known colored circle of fifths. Nevertheless, we wanted to give credit to the composer and build on his ideas, first of all. Uh, as for the Vine Sonata, on the one hand, uh, it was more complicated since there are no direct approach to reading his music from the synesthetic point of view. On the other hand, it was in fact easier since it was possible to rely on more integral perception of both music and painting. Excellent. Thank you yeah. so much. Yes, thank you so much. And we're going to take a look at some of the work now. Definitely. Enjoy. Just 
Thank you so, so much. Yeah. We're so happy to be here today. Please consider supporting us. And, that, and we hope that you will be able to join us on August 2nd for the YouTube premiere, 2 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll see you there. Definitely. Thank you again for being here. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Oh. Aisha. Yeah. This is pretty cool. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying um, it. Yeah, yeah. Keep it let's keep it moving. Yeah. Um right now we're waiting on our next uh project. They're they're getting all uh, ready for us. But um I think it'd be cool because if if no one knows yet, you know, we've been virtual since the end of December of 2019, January. So this has been a huge transition for us. And now we're seven months in. And how would you say you're adjusting? I'd say at this point, feel like we, we've got the swing of it. It was it was rocky, but now it feels feels like we haven't missed a step. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's been really interesting to have made those steps to become fully virtual and then you know, having the world needing to do the same kind of right after we had made that jump. So, you know, we were thankfully already in our homes, able to, to stay safe mm -hmm. from the very beginning, um, but then also help those others who were wondering, how do you do this? How, how does someone become remote? So I think for us now, we're definitely settled in um, to that remote life. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the remote life. Um, I think the biggest takeaway is obviously time management, but just realizing um, that you can still get so much work done and you can still reach and connect and still have impact. You know, we always think we're limited. We're limited because we can't physically be somewhere. And in a, in a lot of ways, yes, it has definitely altered the work and progress of certain activities. But Technology is here. I think we did. We underestimated how advanced we were with all the technology that we had. And, <laughs> um, yeah. People are. We're still making changes. We're still making impacts. We're still progressing. So. And definitely, I think it's helped our artists into the idea of pivoting towards digital work. As now that everyone's had to go do things over Zoom or over streaming and things like that, I think we've been really helpful to those artists who didn't quite understand before. And you know, still helping people along with, well, how does it work? I need to send you a check, <laughs> that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, but helping people through that's been really great. Um, so. It's a journey, I would say, um, and it's been glad to do it here with Fractured Atlas, who's had that kind of thought process, thought process already. So, and being an artist myself, it's been, it's been, you know, and yourself as well. Yes. Uh, taping and doing things virtually is not, not too different for us. <laughs> exactly. So, disclaimer, everyone watching. This is the first time I'm using a home set of ring, uh, R, what is it, LED, see, listen to me, LED light, <laughs> ring light. So again, underestimate yourself and you rise to the, to the occasion with these challenges. We can do it. So um, I agree. It's definitely be a learning curve for us. Um, coming up, we're actually going to go into one of our uh, intro videos for Fractured Atlas. Please check it out. I'll bear with us as we have a couple technical difficulties, but I think we're going to um, actually move straight into our uh, next artist so that we can start highlighting some of their work. So we've got some good ones so far. Yeah, so far we've had some really great. And don't forget, everyone, to be donating to these artists. Um, you can go to fundraising.fracturedatlas.org, where you can find all these artists' uh, general support pages. And some of them actually do have crowdfunding campaigns going on as well. So it's a great chance to give to one of their campaigns. Um, and then let's just peruse some of their other things to see what they might be working on now or what they might be working on later and how you can support. 
So definitely um, check them out. All right, so we're, we're going to be going on to uh, Lissity Collins. Uh, hi, Lissity. How are you? Hi, beautifuls. I'm great. How are you? Good, good. We're so glad to have you here and glad that you could join us today. Um, so I'll go ahead and just give a little introduction. Okay. Lissity is fearless. NPR's Here and Now described her as courageous, writing, and singing full frontal. Combining her raw, passionate voice, intense rhythmic guitar, penetrating lyrics and spoken word, Licity creates music and shows that that and shows that are unique, immersive, and memorable experiences that will change your life, lighting a fire in the part of you that is fearless too. I love that. It's so beautiful. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and play a little bit of your work um, and then hear from you right after. Okay, great. Why he loves you so vulnerable, so unprotected. Once you start to sing about a thing, it's getting better. Oh, so now I can say that also. So that first reading about um, the guy asking me that one line email, like, do you really, did you love me? That's how the story started. This song is how it ended. Yep. Sitting in my bedroom, staring at the dark. The dog woke me up again, five again sharp. So I dug out a pencil to write you some words while I waited for the sun to come. You're on my mind again, you always are. I can't seem to scrape your face off of my heart. I told you why he loved you. We were just friends, but I'm not gonna do that again. And I should open some windows and let him see me, but I can't wake up. Yes, then I should welcome the stage with the flourish and flare, but I don't. Cause it's you, you, you. That's why I gave you the key. Oh, thank you, thank you so much for that beautiful music. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and the art? So first of all, I want to say what a fun fun thing to do and like intertwining arts. That was amazing. I want to get in on that so bad. So really cool to like <laughs> meet some other artists doing things. Um, I make folk music and I layer it with classic rock because I want to take care of the part of us that is tender and vulnerable and scared. People are so scared right now. And I want to infuse it with that bravado that says, man, we can do anything, right? And so for me, that's what those two genres meant for me. Folk music gave me the language to express the like tender inner part of me. And rock and roll gave me that energy to say like, F yeah, like I'm strong. I can do whatever I, I choose to do, which I think 
is what us artists model for everyone, right? <laughs> um, that fearlessness, which usually, you know, we're always shaking in our boots, but we look fearless. So <laughs> that's what I think we can inspire in people. That's why art is so important and so important right now. And, um, and Fractured Atlas for me has been a lifeline because through Fractured Atlas, I create my membership program, which I call the Love Circle. And that's where my monthly donors come and they give a donation through Fractured Atlas and it's tax deductible. And every month I give them a really juicy, what I call a serving, because there's a space in my website that's exclusive for them. It's password protected. It's called a Love Circle Cafe. And that's where my my love circle, my membership people come and, and interact with me. I write a juicy serving every month that is just insights because I also do spoken words. So it's just insights to everything that's happening in our lives. I share all of my music first there. You get exclusive scoops. You know what's happening that nobody else knows. So that's what Fractured Atlas has allowed me to do. And I'm so grateful. And I would love people to join my love circle through donating to me through Fractured Atlas. Felicity, thank you so much for sharing that. And it's so good to see a face. I know, I think we messaged back and forth on the on the other side of this. So it's I'm so, so happy to see you all. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And thank you for sharing. And you know what? I have my ring light going too, girl. <laughs> see? <laughs> well, it was great. It was phenomenal. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your amazing work to support me too. I know I'm a squeaky wheel. So you guys have been amazing. Oh, no, of course. Anything we can do. Thank you. Take care. All righty. So we're going to go into our next uh, block of performers. Um, Give me one second. We're going to go into our next block of performers. Um, It looks like we're being joined by a project that we uh, were going to do, but we went into list of these great works. So now um, it looks like we're going to try to squeeze that in if you could just give us one second. Give us one second here. All right, so before we get into them, sorry, it was just a little bit of a switch up here. Um, they are gonna be part of our next lineup. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get into the next block, which will be Lost Synagogues with Andrea Strongwater. And then afterwards, we're going to jump back a little bit, and then we're going to go to um, Robbie Hall Kumalo with 40 Years of Virtues. And then after that, we're going to go with Non Ho, the Non Ho Project. Then we're going to go to Trace Brewhouse Production with Katie Kopaitich and Monica Robles. And then we're going to see Rightfully Sown with Godfrey Riddle. And then after that, Cross That River with Alan Harris. So I believe right now, this is Andrea. Yes, it's me. Hi, Hi Andrea. Andrea. Andrea with Lost Synagogues. How are you? I'm good. It's interesting to watch this whole thing evolve. <laughs> For you and me both, but we're having fun. <laughs> um, Andrea, I'm just going to say a little about you. For all who don't know, Andrea Strongwater is a New York-based visual artist creating a wide range of art. Strongwater graduated from Cornell University's College of Architecture, Art and Planning. Her artwork has been shown in many areas of the US and France and has been used by the VSA, an affiliate of the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, DC. Her Jewish themed work can be seen in synagogues and in the collection of the Jewish Theological Seminary in Manhattan, as well as homes, libraries, and museum centers. Strongwater has illustrated several children's books, including Princess Ingber Ingborg, Ingborg. Ingborg, thank you, and The Dragons, and a teaching manual for Afghan women. She wrote and illustrated an overview of this project, including 20 synagogues that won two independent publishers awards. Currently, the Jewish Publication Society and University of, ne of Nebraska Press are planning to publish a comprehensive illustrated 
book of the complete project, including 83 synagogues, 130 original paintings, and text describing each building and community. Andrea and the publishers need financial support to complete the work and make it available to the public. I do also want to share a really uh, prominent um, note that Rabbi Barry Shorts, head of the Jewish Publication Society, the nation's oldest not-for-profit Jewish publisher, shared about Andrea's work. He says, from the moment Andrea Strongwater showed me her remarkable project, I was taken, and we hope you will help us amass the funds needed to publish the lost synagogues of Europe. As the late Stephen Goldman, executive director of the Detroit Holocaust Memorial Center, wrote, lost synagogues? They are lost only if we forget. How can we even begin to discuss what was lost until we know what was before? Strongwater's paintings evoke the beauty and vitality of the lost communities of Europe. The lost synagogues of Europe, great and small, are no more. But their presence lives on but their presence lives on in this humble but moving tribute. And so too does the memory of the Jews of all walks of life who built them, gathered in them, prayed in them, studied in them, danced in them, and mourned in them. The lost synagogues of Europe found a place in my heart, and I hope it's I hope it finds a place in yours as well. That, that was amazing. Um, I remember when I had, when I looked over this before, I said, "Oh wow!" And I'm also from Detroit, so I was like, "Oh, that's great. This is amazing." So I I really appreciated him sharing that and you sharing your work. Um, before we get into this, I do want to just ask you. Have you been working on any new art over the past few months? And if so, what? Well, I have been discussing with the publishers. You know, it's process. Um, and we, we all agree um, to make the book stronger, that I should have more images, more paintings um, of interiors. Because right now I only have 20 interiors, and I would like to add more. And that's what I've been doing. Um, at this moment in time, as we know, life is kind of difficult in a lot of ways, but the internet is still there. And it turns out that um, I can do a lot of research in a quiet time without socializing. And so I found a lot more images that I can work with. Uh, when I paint, I use a photo of the actual place to interpret it into a painting of my own. Um, I know that um, the re reliability of images is very important. So I've basically been taking photos from places like YIVO or the Leo Beck Library and sometimes auction houses. And those places have photographs that were uh, described when they were taken and they're, they're cataloged that way. So I know that they're the real thing and the description is correct. Um, and we also decided, the publishers also decided that I needed a lot more text. So I am compiling and writing more information about each architect and each building, plus a few paragraphs about each community. Um, and I'm also including, because I've been able to find also online, uh, memories of people who actually worshipped in those places. Wow. So it, it brings... You know, it brings it very much to the moment. It feels very real is what I wanted out of the project. That you would feel as if you could walk into these places. Okay. Well, before we get into your um, lovely video that you pres provided for us, is there anything else that you want to say? Um, I, I did have a few other words. I thought there would be time. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to describe a little bit how people always ask how I got into this project. And it was kind of by accident in that I was doing, I needed some Jewish themed work. And I found a book of old postcards that predated 1918. And so I worked with those to do synagogues. And I found that people loved them. It didn't matter what background they were from, people really were drawn to them. And so I found that um, after some time I made more and the Holocaust Museum in DC asked me to make postcards of my paintings and the same thing happened in France. So I knew that they were speaking and I realized that I could tell a story using these pictures. So that's what I've been trying to do. And um, I'm thrilled that the Jewish Publication Society in collaboration with the University of Nebraska Press have decided to make a book out of it. But since it's so many pictures, 
<laughs> a subsidy to cover all the extra expenses. So Got it. That's what we're looking for help with. Okay. So I'd be thrilled if anyone could help. Every little bit helps, and we're happy to have help and, and participation. I'm also open to um, information that anyone has on the subject. So. Well, I hope that whoever sees this, that they respond and, and that you get the support that you need. We're going to play this right now. One second. I wanted to play the rest of it. I was I was into the music, sorry. But those are beautiful images. Thanks. No problem. Um, we're just leaving up your information. So if anybody wants to donate, please uh, definitely check her out on her so social media accounts or definitely um, go to her donation page. Thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for organizing. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. Wow, what amazing work. Uh, I love the music that went along with it too. <laughs> it was so good. I was so into it, so into it. All right, so we're going to keep it moving with our uh, next work. Yes, are we jumping back to, to Robbie? To Robbie. Hello. Hello. Hi. This is uh, Nathan Zabidio here. I'm director of, of programs at Fracture Atlas, one of two director of programs. I'm producing tonight's event, and you're seeing my face because <laughs> we are running a little bit behind, and we've had some technical issues with some of our participants. So I want to just start by apologizing for that. Um, but also to thank Lauren, Aisha, and Colleen for the brilliant job hosting that they're doing. I've been messaging them and asking them, you know, Fill time, stretch it out. Um, but it looks like our next artist is ready to go. So I'm gonna remove myself. Um, thank you all so much for calling in and we will get things started. All right, Aisha, take it away. Great, wonderful. Yeah, so uh, as you can tell, this um, is a work in progress. It's one of our first telethons ever, so we're glad you're here along for the ride, but there can be those technical difficulties um, as we move forward. But we want to bring in our next artist, uh, Nan Ho, with the Nan Ho Project, and their co-presenter, Elizabeth Dyer. Hi. So, hi, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I'll talk a little bit about um, Introduce Your Work, and then we'll hear from you and watch your video. Okay. So. Nan Ho, an emerging artist from Sacramento, California, is a choreographer, dancer, teacher, director, and mentor. He's most known for his fusion of dance styles and movements. Nan has always been inspired and intrigued in the exploration of movements through kinesthetic teaching and demonstrating. 
His energy is described as dynamic. In addition, he enjoys collaborating with composers, musicians, photographers, videographers, designers, and all forms of artists. He himself started out as a musician who was itching to dance from his seat. Besides dancing for many professional companies from West Coast to East Coast, he founded Nanho Project in 2010. As an artistic director of the company, he enables many artists to perform in a professional atmosphere and escalates them to be professional performing artists, um, which I love the work. And we are we are joined by Elizabeth Dyer. Thank you for ha being here, for joining Thank you. us. Yes, of course. So um, a question I have for the both of you uh, before you kind of start more about the work is, have you been working on any new art um, over these past few months? And if so, what? Yes, actually. So um, in 2020, we were supposed to celebrate our 10 year anniversary, but because of the pandemic, um, we're kind of set back a little bit. This is the reason why this is so great that you guys are providing this telethon um, for us to share um, what we do and our um, with our dance platform. Um, actually, this year I started to have two different company, one in San Jose and one in Sacramento, which um, is a lot of work. Um, but we were so heartbroken when we heard that we had to um, shelter in place. So it kind of backset everything. Um, but we were generating um, some new works as well as uh, recreating some of the repertoire that we have in our um, archives. So we were hoping to present that in two different locations to celebrate where the company started and where I am now in Sacramento. Um, but I'm we're still pushing strong through uh, through online uh, rehearsals. Um, and yeah, so I'm so happy that the company, both company are um, excited to continue and push through and weather through the storm. Yes, that's beautiful. I love interdisciplinary work too. So give us a little bit more about um, kind of the work that you'll be presenting today and, and how people can get involved. Yeah, so we are, like I said, we're generating two new works um, due to like the limited um, space that uh, the dancers have in their home. So Elizabeth um, Dyer here has been with me for three to four years and she's actually with the Sacramento company. Um, so we're excited to um, continue this process and we are doing one contemporary fusion type of work and the other one kind of get down to to the gritty of like jazz, hip hop, contemporary. We're doing something, um, a so piece fun. Through, yeah. <laughs> We're dancing to a piece by um, Chance the Rapper um, called Hot Shower. So it's the first time <laughs> we ever broke out in, t in, in that kind of um, format or musicality, so yeah. Fantastic. Well, definitely take a look at their work. Um, we're going to go ahead and play the reel so you can see just a little taste of their work. Yeah. Thank you. 
I got you stuck off the realness. We be the infamous, you heard of us. Official Queensbridge murderers. The mob comes equipped for warfare. Beware of my crime family who got enough shots to share for all those who want to profile and pose. Rock you in your face, stab your brain with your nose bone. You all alone in these streets, cousin. Every man for himself in his land. We be gunning and keep them show crews running like they supposed to. They come around, but they never come close to. I can see it inside your face. You're in the wrong place. Cowards like you just get their whole body laced up with bullet holes and such. Speak the wrong words, man, and you will get touched. You could put your whole army against my team, and I guarantee you it'll be your very last time breathing. Your simple words just don't move me. You're minor, we major. You're all up in the game and don't start to be a player. Don't make me have to call your name out. We cool as February. My gunshots will make you levitate. I'm That was phenomenal. I actually do uh, hip hop and social justice theater, so I was in it. I was in it the awesome. whole time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love collaboration. So, you know, with this platform, I'm hoping to reach out with other artists um, with different mediums because that's what we're all about. Um, Community, we have, yeah. Yeah, we have shows with like spoken word artists, um, videographers, photographers, um, b boy, MC. Like, so I would love to collaborate with others as well. So. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, again, look in the comments if you want to donate to Nanho Project. It's a pleasure seeing you all IRL. <laughs> Not technically IRL. <laughs> um, but speaking with you over the time you've been with us has been great as well through emails and whatnot. So thank you. Remember to donate to them. Check them out. Um, Nanho Project. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, moving it all right along. Hey, Lauren, how's it going? Have you Pretty been enjoying good. all the art we've seen so far? I have. I have. I caught the tail end of that one. That was pretty cool. So yeah. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying a lot of it. Um, I think this is going to be something that we need to definitely continue to do <laughs> over and over again here. I'm, in, I'm enjoying and interacting with our projects in a different way. Right. It's always great um, to see the work. You know, we see bits and pieces as when we're trying to help them with different things, such as grants or doing their individual appeal letters, mm -hmm. crowdfunding, things like that. But to actually see in their in their artistic element has been uh, really refreshing. Yes, well. absolutely. Well, we're going to um, take it over with Catherine. Is Catherine on? Hey. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. I'm in. Forgive me in advance. Catherine Kapaitich? You got it. That was great. My family texted me, actually, after you introduced, and they said, wow, they did a really good job. <laughs> awesome. I was working on that. And you guys are with Trace Brujas, yes? Yes, we are Trace Brujas. Awesome. And Monica Robles? That's right. I usually get Robles, so great job on that one, too. <laughs> Well, I, I have to definitely share a little bit about you guys. Um, I hear you guys are based in Inwood, New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, Trace Brujas Productions is the effort, organization, and backbone of productions made or managed by Catherine Kapitich and Monica Robles. Partners in life and arts facilitation, Catherine and Monica have collaborated with folks in Baltimore, New York, and San Juan. Trace Brujas' current, Trace Brujas's current documentary project, Croats, presented. Croats. You'll see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> presented today explores the fantasy of heritage through an American family's fraying ties to the old country. So I'm gonna. We're gonna share this. Was there anything that you wanted to say before we started? If I may, yeah, I wanted to uh, just note that this project uh, has been in the works for about six years and has been on the back burner while we've worked on theater projects. Um, and there's no time like a self quarantine to start editing uh, old video. Um, so it's kind of taken a number one priority spot now. And any and all donations from this event are going to go to post-production costs, like hiring a colorist or a sound mixer or a second editor. And the beauty of those jobs are that they are remote and can be done from home. So uh, with your any donations to Trace Brewhouse today, we'll directly go into the pockets of other film freelancers that we need to hire that have probably lost work um, since the start of the pandemic. So. 
Um, it'll help move the project forward and then also give back to even more people. So thank you. Um, and this is a, the premiere of our proof of concept for the documentary project. So please enjoy. Nice. I have two memories of my grandfather Mirko, a Croatian immigrant who landed in Baltimore in 1939. One where he plays the accordion for me, the other where he lies in his casket. So in order for Grandpa to feel, your grandfather to feel more at home, he collected a bunch of busts of up old sidewalks from in front of Golden Ring uh, uh, Junior High, high School. Uh -huh. Had them dumped it here, and he stacked the 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 um, pieces of broken concrete to make it look like limestone walls in Kuku <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. His mother told him that he had to go away before his father killed him. Uh, he turned out to be a hothead like his father, except that he wasn't an alcoholic. Oh, and his father was. But I what's believe your... he was an alcoholic, but that's my thing. But, what, but how did no, the father all die? Of us are. Oh, and then... <laughs> and we all from him when, he, when he beat Normie. Well, yeah, he, I, he I, said, I, he, Grandpa said he's going to come back and scratch strangle his, our mother to death or something like that, oh, right? Wow. Well, he. He already had her. He had his hands around her neck. This reminds me a little bit of a Kira Kurosawa's story about uh, a murder that happened, and then you get four different versions. <laughs> Just in, so indicative of. Hey, sorry about that. I, we were hoping the lag would resolve itself, but no, it did not. Um, uh, Lauren, can you try reloading the video and we can have a little do over here? We also want to, we'll also drop the link to Vimeo in the Facebook and YouTube chat. So if for whatever reason this continues, uh, we really hope that folks who are watching can, can view the, the trailer in, in their own time. Sorry about that, Katie and Monica though. All right, looks like we're all loaded up. So I'm gonna start this video. Thanks so much. I have two memories of my grandfather Mirko, a Croatian immigrant who landed in Baltimore in 1939. One where he plays the accordion for me, the other where he lies in his casket. So in order to, for Grandpa to feel, your grandfather to feel more at home, he collected a bunch of busted up old sidewalks from in front of Golden Ring uh, Junior High School, uh -huh. had them dumped it here, and he stacked the, the, the um, pieces of broken concrete to make it look like limestone walls in Kuku <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. His mother told him that he had to go away before his father killed him. Uh, he turned out to be a hothead like his father, except that he wasn't an alcoholic. Oh, and his father was. But I what's believe your... he was an alcoholic, but that's my thing. But, what, but how did no, the father all die? Of us are. Oh, and then we all from him <laughs> when, he, when he beat Normie. Well, yeah, he, I, he I, said, he, Grandpa said he's going to come back and strangle his, our mother to death or something like that, oh, right? Wow. Well, he already had her. He had his hand. Foiled by the gods of the internet. This reminds me a little bit of a Kira Kurosawa's story about uh, a murder that happened, and then you get four different versions. <laughs> Just in, so indicative of the different impressions people give of the facts that they encounter in their events, the events in their lives. Mirko je bio sestra, se mi ruša. Mirko je bio If you had a, a past that has bad memories, you might want to block those memories 
comes out of your mind, but maybe our All right, Monica and Katie, I'm so sorry that the internet just does not seem to be cooperating today. Um, but as I said, I want us to, uh, we've shared the link to the Vimeo. Oh. Say you're just burying the subconscious <laughs> and it's gonna come back and bite you in the ass one day. Personally, I think you should learn as much about your past and your family's origins as you can. And it might give you insight into your the positives and negatives of your personality how that it can help you i guess depends on what you do with that information my grandfather spent his life fighting for control over that which he had little a war-torn homeland his wife and kids success in america his power as patriarch would amplify his interpretation of the world around him, passing through generations. He leaves my father and I, the only two to be pulled by fraying ties to the old country. He leaves to choose how we hold on to this heritage. The best friend of my father, he said to him, Mirko, how is all right? Well, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your work. Um, is, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, yeah, so we're that, finish? sure. That trailer is, is public, it's on Vimeo. Please go to the I mean, if <laughs> I'm um, imploring anyone who just <laughs> watched that to watch the whole thing um, in full quality. Uh, but thank you guys for doing this event. And again, the video is now live. It's on all of our websites and uh, our Vimeo account, which is on our Fractured Atlas donation page. So thank you for uh, tuning in. Please go watch that and uh, stick around for the next artists. Thank you. Thanks, Katie and Monica. Thanks so much. Well, Lauren, rocking and rolling with this, um, <laughs> the life of being virtual, <laughs> um, but we're still going to make it through, right? We're going to the, to Alan Harris. Yep. Here he is. Hey, Alan. Hey guys, how are you? Turn my, up. I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Uh, it looks like. We're just trying. I see you're ready. I like that this live <laughs> entertainment here. Just give me one second. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Alan, as you can, as you as you probably already know, we're running a little bit behind. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I know that you know everyone's time is valuable here. So. Uh, I I'll definitely. I was just getting your information, getting your stuff together. All right, Alan. I'm sorry about that. That was me this no, time. It was the no, internet. It. I, let me see. Wait. I'm oh no. Let me add. Let me add Colleen in. She was supposed to present this one. So sorry, Lauren. My bad. Okay. okay here she is. <laughs> no worries. Uh, hi, Alan. How are you doing? Hello, Colleen. How are you? <laughs> good. Good to see you. Um, if you have time, I have a brief intro for you. No problem. Awesome. So everyone, uh, this is Alan Harris with Cross That River. Um, Alan uh, has established himself as one of the jazz world's most acclaimed vocalists, possessing a potent combination of dynamic vocal abilities, impeccable phrasing, and powerful emotional resonance. His charismatic and soulful vo voice has earned him three New York Nightlife Awards for Outstanding Male Jazz Vocalist, the Downbeat Critics Poll Award for Rising Star Jazz Vocalist, two Hot House Jazz Magazine Awards for Best Jazz Vocalist, the Chamber Music America Residency Grant for his musical, Cross That River, and the Jazz Museum of Harlem Award. 
heralded by the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Atlantic Magazine, Jazz Times, Downbeat, and more, Alan is a real storyteller through authentic interpretations of the American songbook, classic and contemporary jazz, popular standards, blues, and originals. All right, welcome again, Alan. Uh, what's going on with Crest at River? Do you have anything to share with us this evening? Well, uh, because of the pandemic, you know, the band is doing their own thing. They come over here. Um, they come here every Tuesday night and Saturday night, two members of my band and we stream, but this I'm going solo right now. And this is, um, we're going, I have a new agent working with me. Okay. So in 2021, we're gonna start production again this fall for 2021 of the main cast, which is about nine people. And we go on tour for um, Cross That River and the Black Cowboy. Awesome. And are you able to share some of the music with us this evening? I would love to. If you awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll do something. I'll do a couple of songs. The protagonist, Blue, that's the name of the... Uh, uh, let me just do it for you. This is the opening song. <laughs> Blue was dark as molasses Had hair like a buffalo Ran away from Louisiana Where he watches folks get sold Blue was angry Oh yeah, he was scared So he stole the master's turn horse Roll into the wind There is freedom for the taking If your will is hard and strong Breaking stock and mending fences Rounding up those wild long horns Blew us angry Oh yeah, he was scared but he tried to settle down, Lord, live like a man. Oh, yeah. A storm was brewing somewhere way back east. They say brothers fighting brother, gonna set those darkies free. Blue was angry, oh yeah, he was scared. Let's do the other one. Cause he knew those old slave owners. Would soon be coming here. Well. Well, Alan, we can still hear you. Oh no, did we lose you entirely? Oh no. Oh, that was so great. Oh, here it he was comes. Fabulous. Oh, great. <laughs> Mama Lala, she didn't live in the slave quarters with the rest of us. No shut. She lived up in that big house with all them white folks. She cooked for them. She suckled the babies. She knew every slave's name from 50 miles around. She said, boy, you better run away from this plantation. You better wait till the moon is full up in the sky. Go up on the stable way up high. You better grab that big red stud horse. You know, master's horse.
Mama said a white man be coming in that morning. Gonna drag Big Daddy away. Sold him to the next farm. Gonna breed him to the stock there. Yes, that's where it's gonna stay. We took baby sister up to that big house. Learn her to cook and mend their things. Sometimes in the late night, underneath that staircase, sister rocks herself to sleep. They say there's an old man who takes you across that river. Nobody knows his name. Sometimes around a full moon, better make it to that river. Hide along the bay. Till he whispers your name. Cross the river. Thank you, Fractured Atlas. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was lovely. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Is there anything else you'd like to share with folks who are watching? Um, just hello. <laughs> for, listen to Across that River, the story of the Black Cowboys. And also, I want to say uh, thank you, uh, Fractured Atlas, for giving me a platform. You've been wonderful to me. You've helped me so much. I'm Alan. Amazing. And I encourage everybody to check out Alan's work on uh, Cross That River. Um, I believe it's musical.com. It was just on that uh, card. And you can also support his work as well through Fractured Atlas. Um, all right. So I believe next up we have Rightfully Sewn. Awesome. Hello, Godfrey. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? Very good. Good to see you. In, not in person, but virtually. <laughs> I know we make it work. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. Let me let me give folks a little bit of background on Rightfully Sown and yourself, and then we can get into your work a little bit. Um, so Rightfully Sown is an innovative organization that creates jobs and opportunities through the business of fashion. Uh, they host a seamstress training program for individuals with barriers to employment and they incubate fashion design designers excuse me, through workshops, events, and small batch garment production. In response to COVID-19, they've pivoted to ethically sewing and donating over 40,000 non-medical grade fabric masks to area hospitals for healthcare workers. And here with us today is Godfrey Riddle. Um, Godfrey is the development officer for Rightfully Sewn. Um, so Godfrey, I have a video clip. Would you like to show that first? Okay, great, let me swap over to that. Give me one sec here. Amazing. What a beautiful video. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. What would you like to tell folks about Rightfully Sewn? Well, yes, I wanted to share that video to kick off because that is our very first space in the heart of the crossroads, our atelier. And we were fortunate to open it up in June of 2018. And what's been so important about that achievement for us is that it's now allowed us to expand our signature seamstress training program. So we have been fortunate to grow those classes from six participants in one class 
up to 10. And we've also, because of that space, been able to expand the number of times we offer the training unit within a given year. So traditionally, it was one year at a borrowed high school in our community. And now we're able to host it up to three times within a year. And 2020, up until, of course, COVID-19 hit, had been the year that we planned to host those three courses. But unfortunately, we actually had to cut our very fourth first course for the year short and are only going to be able to host um, two classes this year. But participants in that training program, it is multi-level. So you can expect to learn sewing and alteration skills on conventional and industrial sewing machines. We also, in the higher level units, level two, we teach you alteration and tailoring on menswear, women's wear, and bridal. And then level three is our production specialist course, where you learn how to oversee other individuals on the production line and increase your speed and accuracy as a seamstress, which is how you are paid um, and they determine your compensation. But each of those training units is 10 weeks long. And at the end of the training course, we do connect our graduates with employers so they can snag one of the more than 100 open jobs for skilled seamstresses in our community. Um, so that's been a great networking opportunity for us. And of course, through that, we're able to funnel our graduates to organizations that are paying the highest wage and offering the most competitive benefits package. And what's been great about that is we've actually seen a systemic increase in the amount that seamstresses are paid within our community. Um, as I noted earlier, we had hoped to make 2020 the year that we hosted three courses, but due to funding interruptions caused by the pandemic and, of course, the inability to host those classes safely, um, we are seeking gap funding to bring our program back this autumn. We will do it in a safe fashion, of course, with a reduced course size to ensure for social distancing, and we're paying close attention to the advancement of the virus in our community and will, of course, postpone that if we have to for health and safety reasons. Um, but all of that said, there are three things that you can do to help Rightfully Sewn. First and foremost, I would encourage you to wear a mask to protect your health and the health of your family and community. Um, Rightfully Sewn has been sewing and donating more than 40,000 hospital masks to over 30 entities in our community. But we've also been fortunate to produce fashion masks that are available on rightfullysewn.org under our shop page. They are available for children and adults in um, four sizes and a variety of colors and are only 20 to $25. Of course, I encourage you to donate um, on our Fractured Atlas page. And then lastly, if you have been moved or inspired by what you've heard today, please find us on social media. Um, sign up for our newsletter. We send but six per year, one every other month, and they're very short and beautifully designed. But I am so appreciative of the time to share our mission with you. And am available if you have questions, email us at info at rightfully so. Org or message us on social media. But thank you again, Fractured Atlas. It's been a wonderful time. Thank you so much for being here. It's nice to meet you, Godfrey. I'm Aisha, so <laughs> we've messaged a bunch of times. Sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Borrow <laughs> that. Maybe make it into one of the mask uh, you patterns. Could. Oh, our Pete Gardenia would match that lovely. I love it. It's so great what y'all are doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. All right, we are moving right along through the techno difficulties, through through some of the setbacks, um, but we're here having fun, doing the good work of sharing our art um, through these times. Just to let you all know, we are running about 25 minutes late. Um, so, you know, put that into your schedule, but definitely stay tuned as we have much more um, to come. 
Um, at this time, we want to remind everyone that Fractured Atlas, uh, we are committed to eliminating structures of bias and oppression in our work. And as we strive to increase the economic, political, and social power of artists and creatives, we join with others who see creative expression as a part of a just society. So as a nonprofit organization, Fractured Atlas's ability to contribute to other nonprofits engaging in direct support of the movement for Black lives is limited. However, we ask that you support the following organizations that are making this necessary work possible. So please check out, um, we have a list of organizations that we recommend you donate to and support um, in support of Black Lives and Black Lives Matter. The link to a Google Doc will be put in the comments on our YouTube and Facebook. So please check that out um, and find a, a organization that you would like to support um, in our struggle to support Black Lives. So in moving uh, to our next block of performers, we will be hearing from Hevra Ensemble with Judith Dansker and Loli Cantor, The Confined Arts with Leah Sequilens and Isaac Scott, Pioneers in Skirts with Ashley Maria and Leah Ann Burst, Roaring Epiphany Production Company with RJ Rashad, the Actual Dance with Sam Simon, and 40 Years of Virtues with Robbie Kamalo. So stay tuned. That's the block of artists that we have coming up. Um, and right here with us now, we have Judith Dansker with their co-presenter, Loli Cantor. Hello, how are you? Hello. Hi, good evening. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Um, Thank you for having us. Yes, just to give you a little uh, intro. Um, we have the Hevra Ensemble, a photographer and photographer, Loli Cantor, are collaborating on an exciting new project that draws on Loli Cantor's work documenting the renewal of Jewish life and culture in East Central Europe. They're currently making plans to present their show featuring a video projection along with original compositions performed by the Hevra Ensemble in Ukraine and also the US at venues in Paris and Munich in 2022. Hevra Ensemble performs chamber music composed by group member Jeff Alder that combines jazz, classical, and world music elements. Loli Cantor is an Israeli-American documentary photographer whose work centers in personal, community, and cultural memory. The daughter of Holocaust survivors, Cantor's work is deeply personal yet objectively speaks about current events. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for this uh, amazing work and sharing your stories with us through art. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about um, your work? Sure. Well, good evening, everybody. We're delighted to be participating in the first Frat Shirt Atlas Telethon. My name is Judith Dansker, and I'm a member of Hever Ensemble. Based in New York City, our group performs original world music that celebrates the diversity of many different cultures and religions. I would like to introduce you to my colleague, photographer Loli Cantor. Cantor is a published author of two books and a widely exhibited artist in the US and abroad. Her most current work is an autobiographical story about the untimely death of her parents and her beloved brother. Her missing family through tragic loss created deep holes in her life, which she has been driven to fill through creative documentary work inspired by her family archives of photos and documents. Thank you, Judy. I'm also delighted to join Judith for this fundraiser. In the next few minutes, we will tell you about our new collaborative project. I'm currently creating a video projection that will include images from the Great Choral Synagogue in Johovic, Ukraine. When I first visited Johovic in 2005 in Ukraine, the synagogue was in ruins. My work includes images spanning 15 years in the making of the transformation of the synagogue, which was reduced to, to rubble and now is a magnificent restored building today. The video will be accompanied by Hever Ensemble's music, written by Jeff Adler, scored for oboe, clarinet, bass clarinet, Native American flutes and keyboard. The music has a universal quality, which I love and I'm very drawn to. And I feel that it really helps bring people from different cultures together. Um, so now we're gonna show you the video that we prepared of work that we've done in the past. And we had presented the video in Poland 
2018 and crack right. happened in Warsaw. Yeah, in the Poland Museum and in the Krakow right. Jewish Festival. Right. Jewish Festival. And I just want to thank you, before we play the video, I just want to thank everybody very much. And I hope that you will consider making a donation to help support our project. During this time of COVID-19, planning ahead really gives us inspiration to continue to develop and create art, which helps us to bring our world community closer together. So important at this time. And Absolutely. we hope you enjoyed this, this, this short video with Loli's work and our music. Thanks. Thank you. All right, thank, thanks. a big thank you to Hever Ensemble for sharing your work with us today. Um, hope everyone will consider making a donation. The link is below. Um, we'll add in our next artist. Um, do you two have anything you'd like to, to close with? I'm showing this to you and sharing this with you. And we hope to hear further. <laughs> thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you so you much so for putting this all together. We really yeah. appreciate it. Thanks, you. It's wonderful. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Enjoy your day. Thanks. Hey, Lauren, I'm going to disappear hey, now. <laughs> no problem. I'm really excited. Um, again, Judith and Lori, that was great. Uh, the next project that we have up is uh, Leah Skileche, The Confined Arts, and her co presenter, uh, Pastor Isaac Scott. How are you? Hey. How you doing? Pretty good. Again, putting faces uh, to emails is great. <laughs> <laughs> it is, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. The Confined Arts is a program that cultivates and showcases the talents and creative voices of artists directly impacted by mass incarceration and intersecting social justice issues. TCA enables artists to express their voices through the visual and performing arts, poetry and music as a means to abolish inhumane narratives and socially dis uh, degrading stigmas that are used to describe the past experiences and limit the futures of individuals impacted by incarceration. Through artistry, collaborative activism, research, education, and training, TCA equips the influence policy change and uses their artistry and knowledge to advocate for a word anchored in empathy and saturated with healing and prevention-based policies. Before I begin to play your video, is there anything, is there an intro or something that you would like to say before we start? Um, I would just like to say thank you to Fractured Atlas for this opportunity mm -hmm. and just um, God bless everybody out there. And I pray that you and your families are safe and well. 
Right. It's always a pleasure to support you guys. And you'll also have a moment to share any any uh, tidbits afterwards. So I'm going to start. Sorry, I bet they're supposed to be sound now, huh? Great. All right, let's let's uh, fix that one moment. Um, I believe we have the video queued up in another screen, so I'm going to add that in, and we're going to press play again. Okay. No one worries. Second. No worries. Welcome to Visions of Confinement, a lens on women in the United States prison system. Tell me about the moments in which they deemed your body unworthy of a home beyond bars and. Tell me about the moments in which they deem your body undeserving of love. Tell me about the moments where, in their eyes, you were guilty, despite having to withstand fists fit for fighting. You see, no one wants to hear these stories. These stories of women whose love languages have only been the sound of stifled sobs when words weren't enough. The stories of women skin the color of ash who've been forced to fight back tears and choke back the frustrations of a system that was never really intended for them anyway. The stories of young girls being frisked and fondled beyond their years who've been taught to believe their bodies beckon without their knowing the dead of night, who've been taught to believe that there is solace in their silence. That was very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Did you guys want to go into any more details about the program or? Yeah, we'd love to. Everyone out there. Um, first, of all, shout out to Fractured Atlas for hosting us tonight. Thank you for this opportunity to share our work with all of you. So my name is Leah Spolacci and I'm the artistic director of the Confined Arts. My name is Pastor Isaac Scott and I'm the founder and director of the Confined Arts. I'm also a multimedia visual artist. I was introduced to the arts when I was three years into a nine year prison sentence. And I have to admit that art saved my life. Not only was it the means by which I was able to financially provide for myself, it also became a psychological coping mechanism for me while incarcerated to be able to cope with incarceration and to heal in that process. Um, our I created the Confined Arts from that very space of the power that the arts has to heal. And also with the goal, the explicit goal that we have to center the voices of those people who have experienced the criminal legal system from the inside out. No one is closer to understanding the issue than someone who has been through and has gone through, excuse me. But Leah can tell you more about how we actually do what we do. Yeah, so we build the capacity of both currently and formerly incarcerated artists by connecting them to resources, to research that we conduct along with other organizations, and to an extensive network of advocates, service organizations, and other justice-impacted artists just like us. So throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and the recent national attention on our country's history of systemic racism, We've responded by continuing to create art that challenges and changes the narrative of the criminal justice system. So for example, we've done this through a project called Open Call for Clemency, which was a digital exhibition of visual artwork created by artists who are currently incarcerated and dealing with the effects of the pandemic and the unsanitary living conditions. We've also continued to conduct our innovative research and uh, that which informs advocacy, conducting a study on new possibilities for mental health relief and healing through the arts <laughs> from the effects of incarceration. So we're hosting digital forums and uh, socially distanced demonstrations like Isaac attended this very morning uh, to amplify the findings of that research and the stories that we've heard and we know. Uh, we've also begun to expand our work to a national scale through a video project called The Viral Monologues, COVID and Incarceration, 
So this collaboration pairs people who are currently incarcerated around the country with professional writers and actors from television, film, and Broadway to share their stories with those who otherwise may never hear from their voices. So you can check out all these projects and more at theconfinedarts.org. Thank you. So just going back to what I was mentioning earlier, one of the things that I, meant, I, I really realized during my incarceration was that art has the power to heal families, to change the hearts and minds of people, and to create that change that we actually want to see. The work that Leah mentioned, the work that the Confined Arts is doing is urgent because people are currently incarcerated right now, dying from COVID-19, dying from systemic racism in prison. And it's imperative that we advocate for them and we, and we advocate for the change that we need to see for other human beings who are in prison right now. For the past six years, we've sustained ourselves and our work through our partnerships and our community relations. So we've, we've built a good amount of social capital, but our financial needs have prevented us from really scaling our work to the capacity that we want to and we need to, to really be able to meet the demands of our partners and the directly impacted artists that we work with. So needless to say, your support is essential now more than ever. We are eager to expand our, our um, resources and our um, capacity to be able to do more work. It is like so much in the like fabric of my heart and, and streaming through the confined arts and, and, and just in closing, and I'll be quiet because I'll talk all day, you already know. Um, your contributions will financially support our advocates and our directly impacted artists. So lastly, if you're interested in being further involved with us and contributing your skills or connecting us to artists, advocates, or potential partners, please hit us up. We believe that relationship building is the essential yet often overlooked tool to achieving justice. So we hope you'll support us and join us in this fight together. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, thank you so much. Such important and impactful work for sure. Um, definitely check them out. Uh, that link in the comments, donate. Um, thank you so much for being with us. And I wanted to say, Leah Squilache. You got oh, it. <laughs> I, I messed it up before and I had practiced so hard and I wanted to get it right. Oh, right. don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, so grateful to be here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Isaac, so much for all your, your beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Uh, and next we have up on our feed, Ashley Maria from Pioneer and Skirts and their co-presenter, Leanne Burst. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having us. Yes, how are you? Good. Good. You all are rocking it. This has been amazing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We truly appreciate it. Uh, we're working hard. Yeah. So, just to give a little uh, intro, Pioneers and Skirts director, Ashley Maria, is located in Los Angeles, California. She received her MFA from the USC School of Cinematic Arts, is the recipient of the prestigious Directors Guild of America Award, and most recently, she was recognized as the best new director at the DTLA Film Festival. Nice. The Pioneer Skirts producer, Leanne W. Burst, is a global activation marketer who, whose career spans technology, marketing, consulting, and now film. She is the recipient of the various leadership and business awards, including the prestigious IBM Award of Excellence and Triangle Women in Business in North Carolina. Wow, it's so uh, it's an honor to have you here. Great work you've been doing. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show a little video of your work mm -hmm. and then you can speak a little bit more afterwards. Movies can be a great mechanism for conversation and reflection allowing us to see our culture through the eyes of someone else to create empathy. The team behind Pioneers and Skirts made this documentary to encourage a healthy dialogue about the gender bias women confront in their careers and what we all must do, both women and men, right now to change this. We knew early on that discussing bias and sexism and prejudice can be tough. So we created a film that connects directly with its audience through characters and stories, and then underlines their experiences with statistics and expert interviews. Hi, I'm Ashley Maria, and I'm the director of Pioneers and Skirts. My story as a director in Hollywood is also featured in the film, along with three ambitious girls on a robotics team and a new mom going after her dream career. With impact films like this, screening the film in front of people is only part of the solution. 
we must take it to the next level to have intentional conversation afterwards and give actionable next steps if we truly want to make an impact, to impact change. I'm here today to ask for your support to help us keep our impact campaign moving forward online. Due to COVID-19, our in-person impact screenings have shifted to virtual screenings. And I'm happy to say that we have found the conversation afterwards to be just as meaningful, even through our computer screens. So we all sat down together. Um, for those of, of you that don't know, um, I have a 15-year-old son and a 12-year-old daughter. And we had a really good conversation afterwards. Um, you know, I talk a lot about feminism and, and equality and things just in normal everyday conversation, um, which sometimes is met with like eye rolling and like, yes, we know mom, like, can we just not talk about it? Um, but so I think the film gave us a good opportunity to talk about some specific things and they saw the statistics and, and we had good conversations about um, one of the girls in the movie talked about, oh, they had to make a rule about passing the ball to a girl in a game. And my son said, oh, we do, our school does that. You know, we yeah. kind of had some conversation about why maybe some of those things still happen or focusing on that confidence. Yes, we want to do that. And dad's involved in sports and all the great things that you can do to support your daughter. But then when you send them out in the world, if the rest of the world isn't prepared to, you know, recognize that talent and confidence you know that's that's the gap i just i came on late because i just finished watching it with my nine-year-old and we just kind of went through what that means and she wants to be an actress and we started talking about it. I said, how do you feel and she said you know i felt bad and disappointed to know that women don't make the same amount of money we're working to provide our film as a tool for educational programs, aiming to empower ambitious girls to enter any field they want, and to raise public awareness about the effects gender bias has on girls into adulthood, and to reframe this issue from being a woman's issue into an everyone's issue. In order to build these tools that can be utilized from home during a pandemic, or in the future in a more social environment, I am asking for your financial support. Sure, we're doing what we can with what we've got, writing articles, speaking to groups about the issues, creating awareness in the media. But your financial contribution will help us do so much more. We must create useful impact tools and expand our reach, which involves translating the film into other languages too. Our goal is to get the film in front of young adults and their mentors, so we would like to create avenues in order to reach this audience, whether that be online or in person in the future, we are raising funds to create a screening guide for educators and produce training webinars, and even create an immersive and empathetic VR application to showcase a day in the life of a woman. We have a lot more we wanna do with this film and appreciate your consideration in helping us create a gender equal world for our daughters today. As we say here at Pioneers in Skirts, be the change, be a pioneer. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> now we're real. It's real. This is what we look like. Fantastic. Yeah. Now you're yeah, it's not now it's gone from that screen to you all in real life. <laughs> Let us know a little bit about your work um and how people can get involved. So, um as you might be able to tell, we're mother and daughter and so this was a film we felt we had to make in order to create real change for women and girls around the world. And we're so appreciative of Fractured Atlas for creating this opportunity and supporting artists, you know, as we are so affected by this pandemic, but we've worked really hard to just pivot, to just shift. And because this, this message is pervasive no matter where we are. And so we are so appreciative of the opportunity to tell you about it. And um, it's here's, my, here's my job. Yeah, this is her. <laughs> this is my job. <laughs> And go to, go to our website. We've we've put a, a few things there for people. Um, if you can't get to the link to donate to our impact plan, we have it on the home page directly to our Fractured Atlas uh, page. And we have a lot of information and videos you can watch. Um, yeah, please go to our website. This is a passion project of ours. As a lot of people we've been seeing today, it's been so inspiring to just learn from everyone and what they're doing. We're all trying to change the world. <laughs> 
Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll be putting that in the comments, um, all the links to your stuff. So check them out. Thanks for thanks for being thanks here. Thanks for having us. Bye. That was amazing. That was amazing. You're the first ones. They were the first ones to have a cue card. I loved it. Uh, <laughs> again, thanks, Ashley and Leanne. I'm going to present next RJ Vershad from Roaring Epiphany Production Company. Hello, RJ and Quinn Cunningham, co-presenter. Hey. How are you? Oh, I'm doing Quinn. well. Are we missing Quinn? Yeah, I think he said he got kicked out. Um, so he's good now. There Hi. he is. Hi, Quinn. How are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, awesome. I'm glad that you guys are are here. Uh, gonna just share something about you guys. RJ Vershad is the founder of Roaring Epiphany Production Company, a theater company dedicated to providing educational and performance opportunities to adults with and without disabilities, thus including an inclusive theatrical experience. The video you are about to see is a promotional video that showcases each of our pro or each of your programs within the company. Um, after the video, Quinn Cunningham will be performing a short piece from the most recent poetry show, which I'm really excited about. So without further ado, I'm going to go in and, and start your video. Fantastic. I was jamming to the music. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that was great thank work. Thank you. Thank you. You're um, welcome. Yeah. So Quinn's going to perform a piece from our um, most recent virtual uh, spoken word show okay. entitled Hopeful Illustrations from Our Living Room. Um, this is part of a group called the Lion's Den. Um, it's our Lion's Den poetry group. And so we spent and uh, weeks putting together and having writing circles and doing writing exercises. And we come up with a theme and we write about that theme. Um, this theme was COVID. Um, and we wanted to talk about the quarantine and the pandemic mm -hmm. and how it's affecting, you know, other people and that people with disabilities really needed help understanding what was going on. And so we kind of performed this show to validate their feelings. Like it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be whatever that is, whatever you're feeling right now, it's okay. Um, the piece Quinn is performing is written by Nye Victoria and it's entitled COVID to COVID. Nice. Who, who do you think you are? Do you really think you can just turn everyone's life upside down like this? What gives you the right to, to invade their personal space like that? You have no idea of the madness you have caused or or how many lives you have destroyed since this whole thing began. I mean, you said, you said we weren't going to hurt anybody. But we were so close. 
but yet so far. I mean, do you even hear yourself? Let's talk about the goal, shall we? We said that we were going to get everybody's attention. I mean, you said it yourself that, that people were in such a rush literally every day that they acted as if there was no tomorrow. And see, that's just it. We made it so that now people pray that tomorrow even comes. We made it so that people actually appreciate their lives. So what's the problem? The problem... The problem is that everybody's dead now. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. How has the reception been when you when you've been able to perform that virtually? Has it have, have you noticed the feedback? The or? show was really. Uh, we had a lot of great feedback from the show. Um, a lot of people that were saying like my child, like really this helped them understand COVID a little more. Yeah. Um, we really, this one was a little bit more abstract and more adult for like the adults, um, mm -hmm. kind of understand mutation. Um, it's written by Nye Victoria, who's a fantastic poetess. And, um, she writes her spoken word with all the feeling in the world. And when she wrote this, she was like, I really feel like there's been so many different mutations of COVID that I feel like they're talking to each other. Mm. Um, and so that's kind of where this came from. So um, yeah, uh, if you want to know more about our company, please go and like check us out. Um, we are launching an education program um, for adults with disabilities in January. Okay. Uh, permitting <laughs> and so that's where a lot of our funding <laughs> that's where a lot of funding is going to. Um, so we, if you would like to check us out, please do. Um, you can join us at aurorin50.com. You can log on and we'll send you an email about upcoming shows, um, upcoming workshops, um, anything like that. Well, thank you, Vershad, and thank you so much, um, Quinn. I will definitely be checking it out, and this is definitely needed in this time because I had never thought about that about the, basically the viruses or different mutations talking to one another. So, and the fact that she can cover so many different pockets of people with that, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you guys for hosting this. Glad you liked it. Absolutely. All right. All right. Looks like um, now we're gonna be handling it back over to Aisha. How are you doing? Doing good, yes. That work was so moving. So it's very, very good to hear all the different things people are working on now, even through COVID. So, next we are working with Sam working Simon. With Sam Simon. Hello, and co-presenter Susan Simon. Yeah. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. We're work so Sam and Susan are working with the actual dance. The actual dance is a love story written and performed by Sam Simon with cello and guitar on stage a one-person show about anticipating the loss of Susan, his wife, who is with us here tonight to breast cancer. The actual dance is indeed about what love and life really mean. The actual dance is in its sixth year of touring. There are three touring productions. Sam just celebrated his 75th birthday, happy birthday, and he and Susan will be celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary, happy anniversary. <laughs> Sam and Susan live in McLean, Virginia, and have two children and four grandchildren. Sina wants to show the video, and then you can have a moment afterwards to, to speak about the work. There is a dance, a dance that one day each and every one of us will dance. Dance takes place in a grand ballroom with a fabulous orchestra. When it's my turn to dance, I want to dance with the person I have loved most in this world. And I want us to dance a waltz. Susan. Susan Merrill Kalman. <laughs> That's her maiden name. I can remember the first time I ever noticed Susan. We hadn't even met yet. Oh, I remember this girl with curly black hair and big braces on her teeth. I kept noticing her in that 16-year-old's boy sort of way. The doctor's words, 
They're strange, a new vocabulary that I don't understand immediately, though their import is clear. No, 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 it's none of that, I scream silently. What I need to know is how am I going to do this? How am I going to dance the last dance with Susan? Beautiful. Um, th thank you for letting us be here with you tonight. And thank you for especially Fractured Atlas for this amazing opportunity for so many artists. The actual dance is what we call a theater that matters. It matters because it can change and trans transform the audience members. So I am Sam Simon, I'm the playwright and uh, producer of The Actual Dance. And as you've noticed, Susan, my wife of 54 years is with me. It was Susan's breast cancer back in 2000 that led me 11 years, I mean, 11 years later to, I say for the play to find me. Uh, the Actual Dance is the story of what the caregiver, what the husband, the love partner, as we call them, goes through as they face the potential loss of someone they love most in life. It's a universal story because we will all be there one day. Um, it is the story for, in fact, our times, actually, with, with the world in the middle of a, a pandemic, uh, with each moment in our lives, all our lives uncertain, there is a deep need for stories that ignite the power of love. We like to think that the actual dance is, is that map to that place. So as you said, we're in the seventh year of production. We have performed hundreds of times and now have two and soon to have a third uh, touring version of the show. We are here tonight because we are at a tipping point in the production of the show. Um, the show is ready to go mainstream, stream, or at least we think so. And now there's a global pandemic. We've heard that tonight. Our ask tonight is for any support that people out, out there can give. A small donation will help. Also, um, bringing the show to your theater when that time is possible or uh, to a Zoom event near you. The money and the support we're asking for now is going to do three things. There's a book version of the, sh of the show that's near completion and needs to be published. We are creating video versions of the show. We didn't do that originally because we thought it was too intimate for that venue. But today, uh, we're hoping that it'll enable audiences around the world to see it. And then we're about to launch what we call the La Love Cafe platform or movement, a global network of conversations and engagements around these existential moments when we all experience what love and life really mean. Now, Susan is an indispensable part, if not the cause of this. So let me let Susan say a few words. Thank you, Sam. As he said, it's been 20 years now, back in 2000, was when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And during that time, I said to everyone around me, you must be positive. And by saying you must be positive, I missed all the little signs that would have told me what was going through his mind and how much he really loved me. And I found that finally out when he first was going to do his reading of the book in New York. 
and we were on the train and he handed me a copy of the script to read. Tears came down my eyes and people on the train looked at me like I was crazy, but I knew he loved me. And I have been going to as many performances as I can uh, with him. And during that time, we have a question and answer discussion after he finishes the play. And what is surprising to me each time is people's comments and how powerful the play is. Our goal here is for everyone who needs to see the show, experience the show, have the opportunity to do so, because everyone deserves to know that the hardest times are filled with love. So thank you again to Fracture That Was. Um, the challenge of reaching out, and particularly for independent and small artists, is enormous. And uh, you, Fractured Atlas platform is fabulous. And glad to, if there's any question or anything we missed, let us know. We definitely will. Thank you. My heart just melted a thousand times listening to this. Um, and happy anniversary. Thank you guys so much. And best of luck on all the different versions that you're trying to uh, put this out here and share with everyone. The next uh, project that we are going to get into uh, next is going to be, I apologize. Oops, it looks like there was a jump. Okay, again, thanks again, Sam and, and Susan. Our next project, uh, now uh, finally we're going to get to Robbie Hall, Kamalo with 40 Years of Virtues, and William <laughs> Payton. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey. um, um, I'll just share a little about yourselves. Uh, for 40 years, Robbie Kay's concerts have been joyous and exhilarating with a focus on amusing and edifying the entire family from parents to grandparents, toddlers to teens. Everybody participates with voices, hands, feet, and hearts. Robbie Kay's powerful lyric soprano has great TV commercials for the likes of Coca-Cola, Lincoln Mercury, and GE. While on stage and in studios, it has served her well in establishing an active career as a backup singer for such superstars as Shaka Khan, Aretha Franklin, Jewel, Diana Ross, Rod Stewart, Dave Matthews, Daniel Rodriguez, Mary J. Blige, Harry Belafonte. <laughs> Robbie moves easily among jazz, pop, blues, and world music genres for young audiences. Today's presentation is for all people, every color, shape, and size, especially currently, recently, formerly, and legendarily, children. So if you know any children that are in the room right now, they should come join and, and please include them. <laughs> How was that for your setup? <laughs> That's right. That's All right. right. We're going to get right into it. Everyone, please stay tuned. Tiffany. This is a musical Tiffany happened when I was doing live eight some years ago with Jewel. And they spent a lot of money to produce that show, and it was all for this good cause. But I first personally didn't feel very connected as an artist that I had contributed to the cause. And I, and I said, what, what can I be doing? And I thought to affect the children might be a really way to change the world. So it sort of comes from having that little emptiness where you feel like, okay, I'm really there successful, will? but isn't there something more? Yeah, there was definitely a, 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 a yearning for something more. And coupled with the fact that I had just had Two children. I was just going to ask you how much of it is a part, you know, is that a part of it? Because as a mom, your life revolves yeah. around the kids. It's almost probably a little difficult at times to do what you do having it's children. It's very, very hard. But I think I'm truly the definition of a working mom because mm -hmm. I can bring my kids to work. And from when they were infants, I would strap them on the sling and <laughs> shove them out to the studio or to the session or to the concert. And they worked with me right, right till today. They either perform with me or they're sitting there in the audience with the other hundreds of kids. And it works out, you know, it works out very well. And I, and I would say probably they're so proud, 
you know, when they look up and people are applauding and <laughs> screaming for their mom. Well, I don't like, know about that. No, Sometimes I'm it's just sure a little hard are. for them because they're yeah. like, well, do you still love us? Sure. And it's like, yeah, I do. And, and all the kids here too, <laughs> but I love you the most out of everybody. So it's a little challenging, I think, for them. But they know that I have a gift that I'm trying to share with others. And uh, they're incredibly supportive. They are incredibly okay. supportive. Where did you see the gaps in terms of entertainment for children? Because I assume that's a part of the reason why you went in this direction. Yeah, and if you look at my uh, discography from where I first started, my, my songs were much younger and simplistic when my children were younger. Mm -hmm. And as my children are evolving, I'm finding a need in fulfilling their listening desires. You know, mm -hmm. they're either going to listen to someone that's mature on the radio that might be taking off their clothes and shaking their groove thing, or they need something else to listen to, and there really isn't anything that I have found for the age group of 7 to 12. Kids should be listening to jazz, they should be listening mm -hmm. to blues, they should be listening to a variety of genres and styles of music, but there really isn't very much there for that age group. So especially right now, that is where my music is at, providing some, some something of substance for kids that are 7, 8, 9, 10. What do you do after you watch Sesame Street and listen to Barney? Sure. Where do you go? <laughs> Did you have anything else that you wanted to share in terms of where we can find your work or talk about your current work? Yes. Um, my name is Robbie Kumalo. My name is Robbie and I like to dance. You can dance with me. Come on and take your chance. I know, but you're sitting on your butt, right? Watching this at home, probably, or somewhere. But I'm glad that you're here. Um, and I like to make music for, like you were saying, uh, all sorts of children, all sorts of languages. I speak five languages. Uh, I'm just really amazed at this telethon because it's never happened before. So I'm part of history that's being made on the internet, and so are you, and thank you for being here supporting all of us artists. My project, 40 Years of Virtues, is to help me go another 40 years, because for 40 years I've been singing to children, over a million children, and I look forward to singing to another million, million children, but I need some financial support. You don't know, but I have multiple sclerosis, so technically I'm kind of blind right now and uh, in a lot of pain and a lot of this and a lot of that, but luckily I keep the beat. And I remember to thank God because God is my healing. Thy name is my healing, oh my God. So I ask God, please God, guide me, protect me, and make me a shining bright lamp and a brilliant star. Thou art the mighty and the powerful. And I'm just like a little piece of grain of sand. I am nothing. We are all kind of little pieces of grains of sand. And in this day and age of July, 2020, we're really getting stressed out. We're really listening to the news. We're really listening to this and that. And all that stuff is external and unnecessary. What's necessary is what's inside. So keep the beat, keep your love, keep your mind open, your heart open. Keep your mind open, your books open, keep learning, keep growing, keep caring, keep sharing. And I need to ask my friend Will to help me stop talking so much. <laughs> okay, so then let's just jump right into a little didgeridoo. Um, after all that. Please do. This is Ohm, and this is his sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amazing. And I didn't mean little donation. I actually mean a big donation. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of blind. Oh, no. And I you really need support. I need help. We I would. Need a new telephone, iPhone 13. I need <laughs> support for the instruments that I don't have yet. Or mm -hmm. the ones that need tuning and support. Mm -hmm. Care for the instruments. I know you love music. I know. Ah, what about me? Oh, Sugar Chucky. I forgot ah. about you. <laughs> what about me? Okay, I didn't forget about you. You always talk about orange. <laughs> I don't always talk about orange, Sugar Chucky, but you're beautiful. I like your pink. My pink? Yeah, your pink. My pink. Oh, your beat. My pink. Yeah, your beat. My uh, beat. And my beat. And my beat. And my beat. I beat. My beat. My beat. My beat. My... Okay. It's too cute. Robbie, that was amazing. I felt blessed even experiencing what you guys shared tonight. You guys, the beat will go on definitely for another 40 years. Yes. That's right. Thank you. Yes, Thank you so much. Go on past that. Time yes. And more, and the beat's going to go on. So we'll be seeing each other again, family. Absolutely. And again, or my website. You... <laughs> sure, if you want to share your website before we close out. Yeah. R O B B I K U M A L O. Bobby Kumalo. And my friend's name is Will. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much. So Thank you for hey. having us. Thank you. We appreciate you. <laughs> Have yeah, a good evening. Thank you very much, Fraction Atlas. That was a I I'm blown away all night. I've been blown away with the videos that we've gotten. Um, a lot of them I'm seeing for the first time and the live uh, performances obviously are a huge surprise. So um, up next, I just want to let everybody know that we are running about an and half an hour behind. However, we're making our way through it. And if you're still here, you're still up for a lot of great performances and, and projects to meet. Um, I will get into our next uh, round of art, uh, artists that we're going to um, be presenting next. But before that, I just want to come back in and just say that we are committed to eliminating structures of bias and oppression in our work. As we strive to increase the economic, political, and social power of artists and creatives, we join with others who see creative expression as part of a just society. As a nonprofit organization, Fractured Atlas's ability to contribute to other nonprofits engaging in direct support of the movement for Black Lives is limited. However, we ask that you support the following organizations that are making the, this necessary work possible. And if you can see, we're also gonna share with everyone some of the organizations that again, that are propelling this great work. There will also be an opportunity to get a um, document version of this as well. So keeping this moving, the next block of performers uh, that we're gonna hear from next are Tilted Axis, Music for Mobile Electric Guitars with Patrick Grant, Sandberg with Jonathan Gillard Daly, Dusky Projects with Wimoto Nayoka, Some Holiday with Justin Scarleri and Marina Altschiller, 
and the word is love with Marika Toronto. So we should be seeing Patrick from Tilted Access. Hi, Patrick. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Very good. good. Can you hear me okay? I hear you perfect. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us tonight. For everyone who is just tuning in, Patrick Grant is an award-winning composer and producer living in New York City. His background includes world music, classical music, and post-rock styles, as well as avant-garde theater and performance. He created Tilted Axes, music for mobile's electric guitars in 2011, and has since taken the impact across the USA to Europe and Brazil, and has created a unique sound using a large number of musicians from different backgrounds. He will share the upcoming, upcoming Tilted Axis music video project, Strange Changes, that's being released in celebration of International Strange Music Day on August 24th. The new work is a musical meditation on the various meanings of strange in a year that is already one of the strangest on record for reasons both bad and good. So I never knew that there was a strange music day. So I learned something uh, when I was going over your intro earlier. And um, I do have a quick question for you. What or who inspires you for your work? Um, I guess I'm inspired by um, extremes. Mm. And that can be nothing in the middle for me. I like, um, well, Tilted Axis music for mobile electric guitars was born out of frustration because most musicians are used to rehearsing a show and then people come and see you um, at a venue. Instead, I got this most, you know, instruments is famous for being tethered to the stage and amps. And we actually now have a large ensemble that go into neighborhoods and transform them. We either change the story or we're often now working with lots of musicians from these communities and we're creating things um, as we go out into the world. But I like extremes. Um, for me, the definition of, um, that's the definition of beauty with a capital B. It's the recognition um, and reconciliation of opposite forces, like true faults, inside, outside, hot and cold, because beauty, in beauty, these opposites are tamed. And for me then, truth is the realization and daily practice of these philosophies. So Tilted Axis has become a means of exploring these truths as much as it is about making music for everyone who's been involved for these nine years on three different continents. Nice. I. I'm, I'm looking forward to looking at the video clip that you're sharing. I had never, I wasn't aware of it at all. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked to check this out. Um, was there anything that you wanted to share into, before we go into the video? Yeah, yeah, just uh, wanted to say that, um, I'll let you know the secret. I invented International Strange Music Day 20 years ago uh <laughs> as a fake holiday. And then I found out four years later, people are celebrating it for like community events, school projects, and all around the world. So I made an international Strange Music Day. And so I'm sort <laughs> of uh, become the, the figurehead <laughs> of this uh, thing that happens every August 24th. Nice. But especially this year, um, uh, for a group that's uh, going out into the world performing, we've had to really adapt because of the pandemic. And so um, uh, Strange Changes is the name of a piece we're creating for International Strange Music Day as a kind of, um, it's our third um, creation in, in a distance group collaboration. And we're still working with musicians in different places, but it's a true um, definition of experimental music or art. I have, I'm very, very picky about this uh, definition because a lot of people, if they hear anything kooky, they say, oh, it's experimental. But an experimental piece is something that you create in which the outcome is not foreseen. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 it's like, it's like, we know we're going to go shopping and grabbing all these fantastic ingredients. We don't know what we're making for dinner, but we know it's going to be delicious because we know it's all the parts that are there. So that's how we're putting these pieces together. And I enjoy this, uh, as a process. So we're going to be showing you a video now about our work over the last, uh, nine years. And you'll see how we started out as a community music project. Then as we went international, we added layers, incorporating ideas of science and renewable energy and now with the pandemic reflecting on a number of contemporary concerns and social issues as every artist is um so like the extremes of a battery positive and negative charges it's a time of possibility change and the reconciliation of these opposites so i want to say thank you to fractured atlas um, because all of the performances we've ever given have always been free um, to the public 
and we rely on the public uh, to support us and to pay for our musicians, cover material fees, and administrative costs. So if anyone's watching, make a donation and join the Tilted Axis team. Um, definitely check out all the stuff we have on our website, tiltedaxis.com, that you can enjoy and be aware of um, the upcoming festivities for International Strange Music Day on August 24th. So I guess I'm all supposed right. to say, uh, now I turn it over to the video, and I thank you for all your time. So Perfect. roll it. Combine. Combine. We'll get this working, Patrick. You know, I sent you about 45 minutes ago a link to download the video. Yeah, I, I see that. And you could just do that and just play it without this problem? Yeah, let's see if we can do that. OK. Thanks to everyone who's tuning in. Hope you'll donate to Patrick and Tilted Axis and, and all of the projects that we're featuring tonight are, are worthy of support. So please check them all out. Please check them all out. Just realized my mic was up. So if you can't hear my voice, hopefully now you can. I'm vamping for time so that we can hopefully download this file. Um, uh, I've got a member of our team working on it, and we will share that video shortly. Um, Patrick, su super grateful for you taking the time out to join us. Um, Whose dog was that? Oh, it might have been. It, I think it was my dog. I, I just adopted three weeks ago. How's that for time, Philip? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do we all want to look at my dog? <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so this is Eleanor Roosevelt. She is a, a Chihuahua miniature pincher mix. She's about four years old, and she's a obviously a daddy's girl. Um, uh, and I know a lot of folks were have been adopting dogs while we've been in lockdown. We actually tried for about three and a half months applying to shelter after shelter after shelter. Super competitive these days to to uh, adopt a dog. Um, but I'm I'm so glad that that all of the applications that we submitted were rejected because we ended up with with our daughter, who is you know in three weeks become the love of our life. Um, so thank you for asking, Patrick. Well, I'll tell you this now. I'll tell you this now. Anybody who donates to Tilted Axis during this segment, we'll put 5% of that towards the ASPCA, you know, for all those dogs out there who don't have a nice a home as oh Eleanor God. Roosevelt over there. I can, well, just, I can just feel the love coming through the screen. She's she's the best. She, we, we, love, we love Ellie to death, so. Um, hey, I, and I mean that, I mean that too. <laughs> Let's see the tour board. <laughs> Let's see. She just made a debut. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's see how the downloads going. Um, I was going to say, Patrick, the fact that you, the way you create your work, that's really brave. That you, you know, the outcome. You're not really concerned with the outcome. It's just what you're putting in the process. That's so freeing. There's a lot of trust involved, and you know, I wrote all this stuff I was going to say, and I was speeding through it. But now, since we have the time, um, when I was talking about extremes, I also like the fact that when we go to different countries or we're working with, um, we have a really wide range of people who are in our group, and I like, um, you know, finding ways to unite all of these um, elements. Um, and because uh, that my my. Anybody who knows me knows that I had that quote about beauty, and it's about the reconciliation of opposites. That is beauty, and then putting that into practice—that's truth. Right. And and that most, mostly it comes from the people that make up the group. So we're gonna, like we're, we're we're gonna quickly try here. again on Vimeo at the um, at a, just a different uh, quality setting, video quality setting. See if that, yeah, that exactly. Works. See if that works, and then if not, we're gonna we have it downloaded. Combining the energy of rock, the creative discipline of theater, and the experimental spirit of the New York City art scene, Tilted Axes is both a processional event and an ensemble of mobile electric guitarists created by Patrick Grant. A classically trained post-rocker mm. with a background in theater, 
Patrick created tilted axes as a way of untethering the electric guitar from stage amps. This allows tilted axes to bring music to our audiences instead of the other way around. Tilted axes is also a continuing expression of Patrick's lifelong interest in science and technology. Tilted Axe's free public performances feature music composed by Patrick, with the guitarists using portable amplifiers strapped to their sides as they walk through the streets. The procession of musicians moves along pre-planned routes in select areas, usually in honor of an event, a landmark, or an organization unique to that community. Tilted Axis has had multiple incarnations in the USA, Europe, and South America. The ensemble performs during the annual Make Music New York celebrations for both the summer and winter solstices in neighborhoods like the East Village, Harlem, and Bushwick. Tilted Axis has a frequent presence in Detroit as part of the citywide cultural events, Concert of Colors, and the March to Nan Rouge, and at venues like the Detroit Institute of Arts, the Michigan Science Center, and Third Man Records. The electric guitars of Tilted Axis have echoed through the streets of Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Dusseldorf, Germany, in collaboration with local arts groups and musicians who embody the spirit and culture of their cities. When the pandemic hit, Tilted Axis, like so many of their fellow artists, was hit hard. Unable to perform for the public, our group has had to adapt. The constant transformation is part of Patrick's ethos as an artist. Tilted Axis was able to pull together international collaborations in the virtual sense, such as our appearance in the online celebrations for Earth Day 2020. Tilted Axis created an audiovisual exploration on the lack of social touch during lockdown called Touchy Subjects, with musical tracks and home video collected from dozens of musicians. And another digital collaboration to mark International Strange Music Day is bringing together the far-flung members of the group for a musical and visual meditation on the meaning of strange in a year that almost defies the definition of the word. Tilted Axis Music for Mobile Electric Guitars is working on more projects in 2020, finding new ways to bring their potent and pertinent music to the public with an element of joyous wonder. But the ensemble needs your help to support the musicians and staff who bring all the pieces together and make the project happen. Through our fiscal sponsor, Fractured Atlas, you can make a tax-deductible contribution to our work. Help us make sure that Tilted Axis always stays in motion. so much, Patrick. Appreciate your patience while we got that lined up for you as well. My mic is muted. Yeah. Ah, okay. Sorry. Bring it, bring, bringing everybody back online. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I want everyone to know that's a really high quality video. <laughs> and the sound is the sound is impeccable. I went to bed at 5 30 this morning to make sure that everything was perfect. But uh you could go to tiltedaxis.com and watch it, you know, in his uh, uh, HD glory if you want to. Um, my um, my offer still stands for uh, anybody who makes a donation, 5% going to the ASPCA in honor of our friend Eleanor Roosevelt over there. But I do want to thank um, everybody at Fractured Atlas for this Huculean effort in pulling this off. Um, I imagine the next one will go smoother. <laughs> but uh, I'm just happy to actually see so many of you and put so many faces to names I've been seeing over the last few years. So everybody, please go to one of these uh, fine uh, sites we have there. Enjoy the Tilted Axis content. Happy summer. Thank you, Fractured Atlas. Great, thank you, Patrick. Thanks. All right. Well, I, as much as I appreciated Patrick's optimism about the next one going more going smoother, I think we're going to have to skip skip around a little bit, um, and we're going to bring on uh, Wimoto from Dusky Projects. So, you all set for that, Lauren? Great. Take it away. Hi. I am waiting for Wimoto. I'm really excited about this one because I've I've worked with w Wimoto. Wimoto! Hey! <laughs> How are you? I was just about to give like a whole speech. I've worked with you and I'm going to do your intro, but obviously by my excitement, I 
Dusky Projects is, is, is a favorite of mine. This is Wimoto um, Nayoka. Wimoto uh, Nayoka is a writer, performer, and a transmedia artist. She focuses on horror, sci-fi works, and is the founder of Dusky Projects. Wimoto, we were going to just roll right into your um, footage. Do you have an intro or anything? Or, or no, let's let's do it. Roll. Okay. Thank I love you, really it. And the, the picture of you at the end was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> In right. case you didn't know. Right. <laughs> well, um, if you have anything else you want to share or where we can support. Yeah, okay. sure. So our first episode of Black Women Are Scary comes out Friday, July 31st. That is next Friday. Uh, we'll have direct links available at Dusky Projects on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can also find it at Black Women Are Scary wherever you listen to podcasts. So just remember, Black Women Are Scary. Please make a donation so we can continue to tell our scary stories. And I'd like to thank Fractured Atlas for this wonderful like at-home telethon thing you're doing. This is amazing. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You know, again, I'm always a fan. I will say that um, uh, if anybody doesn't know, we want to put her whole heart and soul into it, like all of our artists. But um, you definitely, you deserve everything that comes to you. Oh, and thank I you so much. I don't know if people know this. Lauren is an incredible actress. That's how she we know each other. She's performed in some of my works. So, yeah, if you're down for horror and sci-fi and, you know, want to see things where the Black girl doesn't die first, please get at me. <laughs> That's what I do. I make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing again. And um, everyone, you can definitely get the link. Um, it's going to be shared and uh, support Dusky Projects. Yes. Thank you. No problem. Bye. Also, it looks like we're going to do another switch around with our lineup. Um, it looks like we're going to go ahead. Nope. And actually. Nope. We've we've got we've got we've got him finally, Jonathan. So happy to bring him on board. Awesome. Jonathan, I love the fact that we're seeing your face now. I'm so sorry yeah, for the sure. hurdles that we've got, got had to go through to to get you here. Uh, I'm here. That's what's important. <laughs> you hear uh, me? Okay. Can hear you just fine. Um, Skipping around the script a little bit, going to bring our co-host Aisha on to do your introduction. So one moment. Love to see your face. Super happy you're here. Aisha, here we go. Hey, yes, welcome. We're so glad you were able to make it. You look wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you and then gonna turn it over to you to talk a little bit more. So Jonathan Gallard Daly is an actor, playwright, and a 42-year veteran of Actors' Equity Association. He has been a member of resident acting companies throughout the United States. He's been married for 38 years, and he and his wife have raised two children. He's a very lucky man. I would say yes, 38 years. Congratulations on that. I've been married 10, so 38. I'm your goals. <laughs> but why don't you tell us a little bit um, about Sandberg, uh, the theater work that you have. 
Sure. Well, uh, I guess the the icebreaker, the the question is, you know, what inspires me uh, as an artist, and what has always inspired me is history, um, particularly modern history, particularly modern American history, and that's what led me to this man, Carl Sandburg. Uh, it was about it was over a hundred years ago, in 1919, when we were in the middle of a global pandemic. And the streets of America were uh, on fire with racial conflict. And Carl Sandburg was a reporter for the Chicago uh, Daily News. He was also a poet. And what I'd like to do for you here is uh, just a couple of little sections from my one person show, my solo, uh, an evening of Carl Sandburg. The first one is from his days as a newspaper writer, and the other is his days as a poet, which are actually uh, instantaneous, or, you know, the same. This is uh, from the Chicago Daily News, July 1919, Carl Sandburg reporting. It began on Sunday afternoon when a colored boy swam across an imaginary segregation line at a Chicago beach. A group of white boys threw rocks at him and knocked him off a raft. The boy was drowned. A group of colored people rushed to a policeman and asked for the arrest of the white boys throwing rocks. The policeman refused. Fighting then began that spread to all borders of the Black Belt. At the end of three days of fighting, 24 Negroes lay dead. 15 white men dead. Scores of houses burned to the ground, chiefly in the Negro neighborhoods, where gangs of white hoodlums from the district around the stockyards and the packing houses rioted through the streets while police turned a blind eye. I am a hoodlum. You are a hoodlum. We and all of us are a world of hoodlums. Maybe so. I hate and kill better men than I am. So do you, so do all of us, maybe, maybe so. In the ends of my fingers, I itch for another man's neck. I wanna see him hanging one of Dusk's cartoons against the sunset. This is the hate my father gave me. This was in my mother's milk. This is you and me and all of us in a world of hoodlums. Maybe so. Let us go on, brother hoodlums. Kill, kill. It has always been so. It will always be so. So there is nothing more to it. Lay them deep in the dirt, the stiffs we have fixed, the cadavers we bumped off. Lay them deep and let the night winds of winter blizzards, the great white sheets of northern blizzards, howl their burial service. Let us go on, brother hoodlums. Kill, kill, kill. For the loins of the women are tireless and the torsos of the men are strong. Black Lives Matter in 1919. Black Lives Matter in 2020. We can learn from history and we can make things better or we can repeat the same mistakes. It's really up to us to stand up and rise, take the burden, and do what we can to make the world better. Thank you for listening. And now I turn it back up to my friends at Fractured Atlas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Um, if anyone would like to learn more about Jonathan's work or um, Sandberg, you can check out his website and you can also support his work at the link in uh, the chat. Thank you so much. All right, so next up, I believe we're gonna be hearing from uh, Justin Scarelli and Marina Altschiller. Justin, hello, Marina, welcome. Hello. 
Hello. Um, all right. So to introduce uh, the two of you, um, Justin and Marina are here from Some Holiday, their original musical about three couples facing the responsibilities of parenthood. Uh, the show had its first stage production in November of 2019. Feels like ages ago, but actually not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Justin's previous work uh, experience at Warner Brothers and the Walt Disney Company exposed him to all aspects of filmmaking and digital media. But this is his first musical project. Um, adapting from a film script that he wrote several years ago and was made into an independent feature. In 2014, um, Marina founded Dive In Productions as a safe space for theater artists of every level to grow and explore in their craft. As the primary composer for some holiday, she's looking forward to the continuation of the story and musical adjustments as the uh, project is further being developed for future performances as well as an album recording. Very exciting. Um, so now we have some clips to show folks of the show and then you all can tell us a little bit more about it afterwards. Sure. That sounds good. Yeah. We could be happy. We could be brave. We could take on the world as our lives unfurl in a stream starring you and me. We could be adventurers. See Van Gogh in the finest museums And I'll be right next to you No matter what we go through Say yes, Grace And I'll say I don't want to be scared Or feel like I might fail And I want to believe In this picture you So many years to go, why should we settle down now and miss out on how much we both still need to grow? I know we'll be happy, together we're brave, and we'll take on the world as our lives unfurl. In this dream starring you and me, babe, let's be adventurers. Should we be taking this step? We'll see your art in the finest museums, then and I'll be this right through. next to you. I don't no matter miss what we go say yes, Grace. I want to say yes, but I know you're scared. I know I'm terrified But my dreams won't come true Unless I'm next to you Forever I'll be by your side You make me happy You make me happy You make me brave You make me brave Together we can take on the world Give our dreams a world I don't mean to press grace, please won't you say I do. Awesome, what a beautiful score. Um, so what would you like to let folks know about some holiday? Um, sure, so thanks for having us. Um, like you said in the beginning, um, I wrote this script uh, a few years ago, and then I approached Marina um, early in 2019, 2018, I don't remember, actually. 2019, yeah. <laughs> Here, time has no meaning anymore. Um, so we adapted the script for the stage. Um, we had our run in November, and we had another run scheduled uh, for this summer, um, but unfortunately, as is the case for everybody, things got postponed. Um, due to the pandemic. Um, we have an album scheduled in the works. Uh, so that's kind of where I'll, I'll tip it off to Marina to talk kind of about the musical process if she wants. Yeah, so it's a story about three couples who are all navigating different stages of parenthood um, in different places for their own relationships. 
It's a story that encompasses a whole lot of different musical genres from musical theater to pop rock, um, looking at classical, um, some more operatic. Uh, and I think the thing that's really beautiful about it is that everybody can find themselves in one of the characters, you know, whether you want to or not. <laughs> um, Justin really put together a, a beautiful and relatable group of six people. So to get to experience them through song is something incredibly special. Um, like Justin said, we've done a lot of rewriting since our first production, new songs, taken some out. Um, so we've got an album in the works to hopefully get this music out to as many people as possible and continue to spread the story of love and finding yourself when the world changes. Yeah. Amazing. And how can folks support you? Um, so you can go to our website, which is someholidaymusical.com. Um, I believe there's a donation link in the comments. Uh, you can also reach out to us through our social media um, and there's a PayPal link uh, as well, but um, really we just appreciate the opportunity to be here at Fresh Atlas and share a little bit of our project along with everyone else who's uh, been working so hard uh, in the midst of all this, so. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Me. Awesome. All right, so um, next up we have a, a documentary filmmaker. Uh, their name is Marika Toronto. Unfortunately, Marika couldn't be with us here in person this evening, but we do have some video clips that we're gonna share um, from them. Uh, so as I said, uh, Marika is a documentary filmmaker and we're gonna talk, be seeing some clips about their film, The Word is Love. Hi, I'm Marika Toronto the director and producer of my documentary, The Hi, I'm Marika Toronto, the director and producer of my documentary, The Word. Hi, I'm Marika Toronto, the director and producer of my documentary, The Word. All right, looks like we're having some technical difficulties. Uh, do we want to try the second video? Yeah, I can only load four minutes of that clip apparently. So sorry about that, Mark. Oh, no. um, yeah, so let's let's switch over to, to Colleen's clip. Thank okay. you. Yep. Which oh, I will I am do. Also getting an error message. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. I know. All right, we might need to circle back to Mark, unfortunately. Um, all right. Um, do you want to try now? Um, yeah, I'll try yours now. Asmani Muzon, and I'm going to be 10 in September 7th, right now I'm not. Asmani, uh, do you remember when you were little and you were with your mom? No. How old were you when your mom was with? Can you tell me why you're crying? Cops, they knocked and we let them in. And when they came in, I, I called my mother and her cell phone. When she came, I started crying. My grandmother, she got, she, she was scared. She started crying. She started asking the police in Spanish to let her go. The day my mother went, went to jail, I didn't know. My sister told me the next day, and I, I just started crying and crying. I couldn't stop. I was like, why my mother? Why my mother? The first day I went to go see my mother, I was excited because I'm finally meeting to see my mother in prison. That was like five months, seven months after she was locked up. When we got there, I had on boots, it was snowing, it was real cold. Then I got there, they made me take off 
my boots and made me dig in my pockets, check out everything. So we went through. They made me get the stain on my left, my left hand. Something that if I don't have it, they're gonna make me stay in there. When I was little, I used to get really upset. Then my aunt told me that if I got upset, try not to like act so upset, because it made my grandma sad. I usually don't, don't feel angry at nobody, except for the cops. I don't like them anymore. I just don't like the cops, because some of them some of them mostly have attitude, and the ones who took my mother, they have attitude. You know the expression, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree? I think that, like, when, when they find that out, they look at me differently, like, Oh, we better stay away from her. She's bad news. And that gets me angry because they have no right to judge me by what my mom did. And it's like, and it makes me sad too because I'm a really nice person, sort of. And it hurts my feelings when they just judge me by what I look like or what my mom did. I know when my mother come out, she gonna be there for me. She gonna do everything she can to get back in my life, to have a better relationship with me. So I, I stay with her, I keep loving her. My love will never go out for her. It will never run out. <laughs> So we have a we have a Slack channel going here, and um, all of us on the staff are trying to hold back tears from watching that video. Um, and to to truly do it justice, I would like to try one more time to share the video that um, Marika sent us to introduce the video, to introduce the video you just saw. So uh, let's pretend that this is the intro. Um, I'm going to get this set up and just continually talk as I do, so that there's not. Uh, uh, silence. <laughs> um, well, okay. I think we can say uh, if you if you're feeling touched by the work, consider donating. Um, uh, there should be links in the in the chat. Um, oh, is it, oh, great! And on yes. the, on the screen. And on the screen. All right, I'm gonna, I'm going to try to play this video and see how it goes. Hi, I'm Marika Turum, the director and producer of my documentary, The Word is Love. I spent five years as an artist in residence with children who have a parent in prison. Together, we created a world that was safe and allowed them to share their feelings. In this film, they'll tell you how parental incarceration affects their lives, the moment of arrest, visits, the stigma society imposes on them, and their hopes and dreams of a parent's return. The time I spent with these children and their families taught me a lot. In this film, you'll see and hear what love means to them. And perhaps you'll learn more about what that word, love, means to you. Amazing. And Marika has just again asked us to say, please donate so that we can release the word. The word is love. And there again is Marika's information. All right. Thanks for your help, Nathan. Of course. All right. So we're, we're down to the home stretch here, folks. I really appreciate everyone who's who's on this call because we, we still have three incredible artists coming up. And I'm going to bring back our good friend Aisha to help introduce some of them. So hello. Hello. Oh, yes. What <laughs> strong children, first of all. Oh, my gosh. My heart was definitely melting through all that. And I was like, I'll keep it together for the next, uh, <laughs> through the home stretch. Um, as we come towards our last few artists, we want to thank you all for being here and for taking the time, even through um, our extended time here, because these artists really are doing amazing work. Um, and before we get into this next batch, um, it's important to mention again that we are, again, a 
committed to eliminating structures of bias and oppression in our work. As we strive to increase economic, political, and social power of artists and creatives, we join with others who see creative expression as part of a just society. As a nonprofit organization, Fractured Atlas's ability to contribute to other nonprofits engaging in direct support of the movement for Black lives is limited. So we ask that you support the following organizations that are making this necessary work possible. Um, in the comments in our YouTube and our Facebook, you'll see a, a link to, um, to organizations which you can choose to donate to, to um, support Black Lives Matter um, and all the different organizations that are working on that front. So definitely take a look there. Um, and again, that article will be available as a Google Doc um, for you all to, to use. So in our final block of performances, we will be hearing from The Elephant in the Room with Priyanka Shetty, Poetics with Seth, Seth Indigo Karnas, and the Physical Plant Queensboro Dance Festival with Carisha Baton. So moving straight into it, uh, we're going to get to know a little bit about Priyanka Shetty. Hi. Oh, hi. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, of course. It's it's great to have you here and um, doing this work. I've been watching your video over these past few days, so I'm excited to show it. <laughs> Thank uh -huh. you. But yeah, introduce you. Uh, Priyanka Shetty is an actor, playwright, and solo performer. Her one-woman show, The Elephant in the Room, was most recently performed at the John F. Kennedy Center for Performing Arts and will make its fringe premiere at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 2021. Yay! <laughs> Unapologetically Indian, The Elephant in the Room is a tumultuous ride through seemingly immiscible cultures, love and loss, and the desperation of not belonging anywhere. The play navigates Priyanka's transition from her deeply embedded roots in India to finding context and common ground in America. So you want to say anything before we head to the video or? I think we can jump right into it and uh, I'll talk about it a little after. Okay, great. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Priyanka. refuses to go on a huge embarrassment to American theater <laughs> with a tearful picture of my mother on the side. <laughs> I came all the way from India to see her show. I own drama. <laughs> Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare. The raven himself is Yeah. There is one in this room. And I'm going to talk. 
talk about it. Places? That's places for top of the show. Thank you, places. Wow, such a tangible story, something that a lot of people can grab onto and, and really relate to. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, I am Priyanka Shetty. I am the writer and performer of uh, The Elephant in the Room. Um, so The Elephant in the Room is a one woman show that starts off as a humorous story of my transition from India to America until it takes a darker turn and you know, sort of holds up a mirror to the various issues that we are dealing with today. What I didn't anticipate while writing this play was the kind of impact it would have on the audience. I found it to be an intimate conversation that was raw and real and uh, healing, both for me as the artist as well as the people who are watching. Um, it resonated, of course, you know, with a lot of people of color, but it also offered various touch points to people who didn't necessarily have the same background and life experiences. So I would say the play addresses, you know, a lot of universal themes such as love and loss and family and acceptance, uh, while also talking about specific issues like stereotypes and microaggressions and racial discrimination and a general lack of acceptance of other cultures. So I think this play brings attention to various uh, elephants in the room and um, you know topics that people are not necessarily comfortable talking about. Um, before COVID-19 hit, I had recently wrapped up a performance at the Kennedy Center and, uh, you know, had kickstarted my tour in uh, D.C. that was supposed to end uh, with performances at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe in 2020. Unfortunately, all of that took a huge hit due to the pandemic. Uh, however, Assembly Festival has offered to maintain our spots uh, for next year, and I will be performing at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe 2021. So as you all know, that is a huge financial commitment for us artists, but at the same time, it's an incredible opportunity, uh, not just to showcase our work, but also to make our voices heard. So I sincerely hope you will consider supporting this project by making a donation. Um, thank you so much for your time and uh, thank you Fractured Atlas for this opportunity. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Remember to donate, um, use that link that you'll find in the comments. Thank you Priyanka for your great work uh, and telling you. these stories that really need to be told for sure. Thank yeah. you so much, I appreciate it. Yeah, one woman show, woo! <laughs> I was inspired, um, but I'm even more excited to bring up our next project. Our next project is with Seth, Seth Indigo Carnes. Close enough. <laughs> is it Indigo? Indigo? How, can you uh, tell me how to say it? <laughs> yes, uh, Seth Indigo Carnes. Oh, just Indigo Carnes. I like, I like your pronunciation too. <laughs> Welcome, Seth. Thanks. Uh, just for everyone to know, your your project Poetics. Uh, Seth Indigo Carnes is an artist with an interdisciplinary practice led by concept and process. His past collaborations include work with Shepard Ferry, The Roots, and Paul Miller, aka DJ Spooky. Carnes holds a BA from Panoma College and in and an MS from NYU Polytechnic. He was born in Napa Valley and is now based in NYC. Carnes' recent work explores the development of a mutable semiotic visual poetry currently focused on a gestural app for iOS called Poetics. The app is used to further develop new ideas in digital poetics and has also been picked up by many schools to teach a variety of subjects. The following clip shows a brief view, preview of version 2.0 of Poetics released two weeks ago, and then a short montage from a short film in progress called Dao, is it Dao of Poetics? That's right by Greg Poole and Sunset People Productions about the app's use and a project with teachers and students at a public middle school in New York City. So we're gonna jump right into it and then you'll have the opportunity to, to speak and tell us a little more after.
Let us know how we can view your work. Uh, sorry, yeah, there was a little more in that clip, but um, are we? Oh, it said actually. I apologize. It's I okay. Will, it's um, just the, it, it, there's this the clip about the use in schools uh, and the film, but uh, we can we can also just talk. That was my bad. I, sorry, Seth. That was my bad. Let's let's go back and take a look at that. Okay. Okay. I, I, actually, yeah. Give me one, one second. second. That shouldn't have happened. Are you able to jump ahead? I think we'll be able to, yeah, but we'll we'll just yeah. take a sec there. Sorry about that. No I'm gonna jump ahead for you. I can talk about it while you guys queue it up if you want. Yeah, yeah that'll please. be great. Thank that, you. That this project happened um, in a, at, as a collaboration with Thompson uh, Tompkins Square Middle School in, in the East Village in New York City, uh, and Greg Poole, who's the director, actually helped put it together. Um, so, and it's currently in, currently in progress. And actually, he just got accepted to Fractured Atlas. So I hope that um, you all will see his, his, his him and his work um, upcoming. Uh, and he's putting the film together. But it's kind of like a verite exploration of the app being used by uh, sixth graders to um, make poetry around Confucius, uh, Conf uh, Eastern ideas, because their curriculum was about it at the time. So, yeah, I mean, I don't want to take any, any, uh, any glory away from Greg if he ever comes on here, but I think the clip is it's just interesting to see how chill, how kids really get activated by uh, gestural poetry. Great, we're gonna add that back right now. Okay, cool. Lauren, hit it when you're ready.
Wow. Okay. I'm glad we definitely played the rest of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Yes, 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 yes. Was there anything else you wanted to share? Yeah, I know there's not a lot of time uh, left, but I'd just like to say, uh, if anyone, um, thank you so much for putting this together, Fractured Atlas. And in particular, what I'm trying to do now, uh, any artists, any poets out there that want to connect on, on a collaborative level, that would be great. I'm looking for that. And also, if you happen to know schools or teachers out there who um, are looking to figure things out with COVID, and, and especially in the remote learning um, situation, I'm also looking to connect and facilitate there. And of course, if you want to donate, that would be much appreciated. Um, it's a it's an expensive project to, to make these apps, which I didn't really know about until I started <laughs> making one. <laughs> so anyway, thanks a lot for having me on here, and um, I, I was I enjoyed it and seeing everyone else's project. Thanks for uh, definitely sharing your great work, and I do hope that you get the funding you need because we're probably going to need it more with the school system, whether it being open or not. So, and kids having access to this. So, good luck. For sure. Thanks so much. No problem. Take care, y'all. Uh, I really, really loved the blend of the technology along with the arts. It's always uh, really great to see. It's something that's wonderful youth for youth who uh, technology is such a big part of their lives. So moving forward, we're going to go on to our final artist. Hello, Carisha. How Hi. are you? I'm uh, good. So nice to see you. Yes. So finally put a face to all the, the yeah. messages and the emails. For <laughs> years. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so this is Carisha Batan from the Queensboro Dance Festival. Carisha Batan is a dancer and founding director of the annual Queensboro Dance Festival based in Queens, NYC. This free summer program presents Queens-based dance companies of diverse cultures and styles touring the borough of Queens across theaters, parks, libraries, and plazas to bring high quality dance performances and classes to various neighborhood communities. Due to COVID, the 2020 Queensboro Dance Festival is touring virtually via Instagram, featuring 24 diverse dance companies in their Queens home neighborhoods. That's amazing, going through home, that, touring a festival. It's such a great idea during these times to, to keep the work going. Um, we do have a video. I don't know if you want to say anything before we get into it. Um, Yes, no, let's um, let's just hit the video and then I can um, give some context after. Okay, great. <laughs>
<laughs> what an energizing way <laughs> to close out this. That was so fun. The so many eclectic dance styles and just a real big view of what Queens really is. So yeah, tell yeah. us tell us a little bit more. Yes, um, thank you so much. So hi everybody, I'm Carisha. Thanks for hanging in and tuning in. Um, I'm coming at you tonight from Sunnyside, Queens. Um, I'm super proud to represent a slice of uh, Queens dance as you saw from the video. Um, there are so, so many dance cultures um, and diversity here. Um, and I'm really here tonight for our Queensboro Dance Festival 2020 dancers uh, that you just saw in the video. So a little bit of history behind our project. Um, as a dancer myself, um, I was living in Queens and after some years I started realizing that I was leaving the borough to find my community of dancers, to build my career, to network. And I figured there has to be a whole resource of dancers and, and community here in Queens that I just don't know how to access. So I started the festival in 2014 to kind of meet other dancers and see who else is out there. And it just grew into this amazing, amazing um, community network of dancers of all different diverse cultures and styles um, from contemporary to all the different countries that are represented here. And our mission has become to strengthen the dance community here in Queens and to garner a greater appreciation for Queens dance. And we really want to make local dance accessible to our, excuse me, our Queens residents here. Um, so it's a very uh, unique platform where we want to promote dance cultural exchange, um, especially between the, the cultural and traditional dance world and the more like contemporary and classical dance worlds. Um, and we like to highlight that our common thread is that we all live here or work here. Um, and we also serve our dancers with um, rehearsal space and professional development workshops, um, classes, uh, teaching opportunities, um, as much as we can do to help build their um, careers here in the borough and connect them to resources here. Now, of course, with COVID, we really had to pivot um, and adapt to um, the situation. And we really decided to go virtual this season because we were committed to being present for our, um, for our neighbors and our community members here as a way to bring some positivity to people, an outlet. We wanted to keep them engaged. And we also really wanted to keep our artists feeling uh, like they're working and staying creative and being engaged with one another and the audiences that we usually have each year. Um, so with COVID this season, uh, we're losing about 50% of our income from canceled performance bookings to losing local business sponsorships because we are committed to working locally um, with small business. So any money that's raised today will directly help pay our 24 dance companies that you saw in the video. Um, they represent 11 different neighborhoods throughout Queens. And we wanna keep supporting our dancers as best we can. Um, it really takes a community of support um, across the dancers and our, our viewers and supporters. Um, we, our program really thrives in a sense of community and working together. So if you love dance, um, if you believe uh, like we do that dance can truly make a difference in families' lives, in your personal life, um, to get up and move and have cultural exchange with one another through movement. Um, if you know a dancer or you love a dancer or you know one of our dancers that are in our season this year, please do consider donating in the link um, that Fractured Atlas is putting in the comments. Um, we so, so appreciate it. And again, all the donations are going directly to help pay all of our companies uh, this season. Um, you can also see in the link some testimonials from our greater dance community that we've been building over the past seven seasons. You can really um, hear directly uh, the work that we do. Um, and we are so proud uh, to serve the community that we do. And then um, check us out on Instagram at Queensboro Dance Festival. We are still virtually touring. Um, we post every day featuring our different dance companies and we have Instagram live sessions every Monday and Friday from four to five. So, um, and all of it is archived on our Instagram TV. So you can definitely catch up um, if you haven't seen us yet. And we also have a bunch of uh, virtual live stream performances coming up. You heard it here first. Um, so please do uh, stay in touch with us and follow us on Instagram. And again, um, please consider donating um, via the Fractured Atlas link in the comments. We so, so appreciate it. And uh, I thank you on behalf of our Queensboro Dance Festival 2020 
dancers who are working so hard and committed to sharing their dance pieces with everyone. Karija, thank you so much for sticking around. Here we are maybe <laughs> maybe an hour behind where we intended to be. I, I wanted to come on and thank you personally because I'm, I also am in Queens. I'm in Astoria. Uh, it's wonderful to see Queens artists represented here. And one of the things I love most about your video is for those who might not know, Queens' nickname is the world's borough because it is really one of the most diverse set of zip codes in the country. Um, and I, I love that that was reflected in the video that you shared as well. Not only the different styles, but the different cultures that, that, that live here um, and uh, practice their art. So, so thank you so much on behalf thank of you. Queens and on behalf of Fractured Atlas. <laughs> really thank appreciate you. Thank you for having me. It was an honor to be alongside all the amazing projects that you support across the country. Really, really inspiring. All right, thank you, Karija. To wrap up, I'm going to bring back our hosts, Colleen and Aisha and Lauren, who both did such an amazing job. We just have a couple wrap up remarks and then hope everyone goes and eats a delicious dinner if they haven't already. All right, take it away, you three. <laughs> yes, so we've officially come to the end of our live stream tonight. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about fiscal sponsorship, but before we go into that, we want to again remind you that Fractured Atlas is committed to eliminating structures of bias and oppression in our work as we strive to increase the economic, political, and social um, power of artists and creatives. We join the others who see creative expression as a part of a just society. As a nonprofit organization, Fractured Atlas's ability to contribute to other nonprofits engage in direct support of the movement for Black Lives is limited. However, we ask that you support any of these organizations here on your screen or in the Google Doc that's shared in the comments, um, as well as supporting all of the artists tonight. We saw some really amazing, um, amazing work. Um, and before we go, we are going to share just a brief video about fiscal sponsorship and talk about it as well. What up, folks? My name is Courtney, and I'm here to answer most of your Fractured Atlas related questions. <laughs> yeah. Fractured Atlas is a multi service arts organization. That means we provide resources and tools to help artists manage the business of their art. We're here to help artists and creatives manage multiple aspects of their work while meeting them where they are. Our programs are designed to support the projects of artists, creative professionals, and activists in need of user-friendly tools and hands-on customer support that will help bring their creative projects to life. The ideal time for using our services is when you're ready to put your creative idea into action. If you're ready to start fundraising or produce an event, you're ready to start using us immediately. The more time you can give us to help your project build audiences and connect with donors, the better. If you haven't fundraised or managed a product from idea to implementation before, the right time to reach out to us is as early as possible. This will give you the best chance for success as you'll have access to more resources, can prepare for deadlines, and can build your skills in a variety of areas. Even if you don't know if you're ready, take the time to reach out to us to see what you can do to set yourself up for success. Being a member of Fractured Atlas will provide you with the resources and support you need to execute your work and ignite the art of progress. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the tools available or that no one understands the struggles of managing your arts practice, Fractured Atlas can help. Making art happen is a business and it can be devastating to manage that business without help and the proper resources. The membership process begins by signing up on our website www.fracturedatlas.org. You select become a member, choose your membership level, and then process payment. Yes, so anyone who is very much interested in Fractured Atlas and becoming one of our many lovely fiscally sponsored projects that you saw here, you can be a part of this family too. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit how that works, how you could become fiscally sponsored. 
First, as Courtney mentioned in the lovely video, that you would need to become a member at the dues paying level with Fractured Atlas. And you can do this by visiting fracturedatlas.org and clicking become a member. Once you become a dues paying member, you'll need to submit an application for sponsorship. The application itself is pretty brief um, and you'll need to detail a project description, a public benefit, who is your audience, who do you serve, um, and a brief budget. You can set up on an online profile that will then go live once you're approved. Now, once your application is submitted, it will be reviewed by our staff and board, and you'll receive an answer within one to two weeks. So it's fairly easy to, to sign up and set it up if you want to start raising money and getting your art out there and making it a reality. Uh, now's the time. Yes, so we look forward to seeing everybody apply and join, join our family and our community. Again, I just want to say thank you for everyone joining tonight for, again, our historic first live stream ever. If you still have any questions, you can contact our programs team at support at fracturedatlas.org or call us at 888-692-7878. And of course, do not forget to donate to the artist feature tonight. Everyone, this was great. We, got, we have to give a shout out to our executive producers in the back and our team, uh, Teresa, Nathan, both Nathan H, everyone. Um, that, Courtney. And Courtney, yes, yeah. you guys did not see <laughs> behind the scenes here. So good night. Thank you. Thanks everybody.